The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Geeks Under the Influence podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of RVA Magazine, Loot Crate, Amazon.com, or their employees. Listener discretion is advised. Fuck off if you don't like it. Calm down, Trent Reznor. Calm down. Damn it. We're off the rails. Get the lights. Get the lights. All right. It burns. All right. Happy Halloween. Welcome, geeks, to another amazing episode of Geeks Under the Influence. This is releasing the day before Halloween, so happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! It is our favorite time of the year, and uh, if you are watching on the video, you'll see that all of us have some costume one way or the other, only one of us wearing a horror-themed costume. (laughs) Uh, but we'll we'll get into that. But uh, first off, what we're talking about this evening is a perfect subject to kind of lead into Halloween. We're talking about horror movie tropes this evening. And you you know yep. exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, if you fuck, you're going to get killed. If uh, the killers come in, you end up running upstairs or hiding in a closet or in a bathroom or under the bed. You know, all the things that uh, you see in horror movies where you go, that's dumb. Or you've seen it a million times in different uh, horror movies over the years. So that's what we're talking about on this episode of Geeks Under the Influence, episode 126. Welcome. Whoa. Geeks Under the Influence. Yay! Woo! I'm super excited about this episode. <laughs> okay, I gotta say, as a fair warning, it's probably a good thing Stephen is not here. He would be killed first. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> no, maybe that's why he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Stephen? He's supposed to be here. Yeah, yeah right. He'll be oh, right back. back. <laughs> damn it, you motherfucker! You stole one of my favorite lines ever. God damn it! <laughs> Bastard. So anybody that's a fan of horror movies knows exactly what we're talking about. Uh, it's This is going to be a fast and loose episode where we just talk about some of our favorite, like, just weird things that you see in horror movies all the time. And we've got a great group to talk about that. So what I, I'm going to do is us all being in costume, uh, I'm going to introduce you. And if you could share with the with the group, if you could share with the group uh, what you're dressed as. So to the left of me is Fuck You, Hunter. What's up, bitches? Um, I, uh, put this together in, um, 3.4 seconds, which is my Spider-Man pajamas looks like a Spider-Man outfit. So there you go. I am the Spider-Man, I guess nice. old man, <laughs> Spider-Man. If you you're you're Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. Uh, next up is Mr. Will McCobb is here. The only one that's, uh, thematic to the <laughs> horror <laughs> episode. Well, I mean, what the hell did you expect out of it? Really? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So I, I figured bringing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre costume and an actual, you know, loaded chainsaw in, in here and firing it up was probably a bad idea. That might be a bit much. Fumes yeah. might, yeah. Yeah. Fumes I mean, might get to us. Like, I wanted to. I wanted to. So, for those listening, <laughs> what are you dressed up as this evening? I got my Freddy Cougar on. That's right. And you got, like, the legit metal claw hand. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The one that, you know, if I sharpened it, would actually hurt somebody, even though I'm pretty sure i'm gonna hurt myself <laughs> yeah, somehow probably. with this <laughs> so this will not be staying on very long the next time you it decide also... to uh to or forget to take it off before wiping yeah. it's uh, gonna get kind of it's also messy. really really difficult to pick anything up do anything yeah you yeah. know and... freddie must have had a hell of a time like you know that's why he's so angry all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, i can't wipe his ass you couldn't, like, you couldn't jerk off. You just like nothing. Oh, Look, and nothing. I'm right-handed. It's like the yeah. worst hand for this to be on. <laughs> it, it is really. It, it's, yeah. it's awkward because <laughs> everything you go to do, you're like, oh, I'm gonna yeah. now stab myself in the taint. <laughs> Speaking of awkward, the next one on our uh, panel 
is uh, the poorly white Queequeg for this month. He is known as Monster Scott. <laughs> that is, he's already in character. <laughs> uh, for those not watching, um, Scotty is dressed as Silent Bob, so that's going to be great for an audio podcast. <laughs> You can talk now. End scene. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you to F.U. Hunter for the, the borrow on the gig since I didn't have time to put anything together today. So No problem. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's kind of weird to see you with hair. I know, right? Oh, I it's, the same thing. it's about to come off, too, because I'm, I'm starting to feel like a little hot. A little, a little moist yeah, in yeah, here, yeah. you know? It's it's a little warm. It is. <laughs> oh, yes. This, and, this. And, and with our lovely host, who... Obviously worked very hard on his costume very, as well today. Very tough to figure we out. We have the Hobbit. Yes, that is right. I am Mike the Hobbit, host of Geeks Under the Influence. This evening I am wearing a piece that I got from a loot crate about a year ago. It's the Master Shredder sunglasses. So um, being the host of the podcast, it seemed appropriate to be a leader type. Um, <laughs> for once. Know, for once. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit, right? We're just calling you Shredder. No master to that. Yeah, no yeah, master no. involved whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitter, follow me at Mike Bickett. Or follow the Geeks Under the Influence Twitter at GUI Podcast RVA. Or the best bet is just to go to GUIPodcast.com. We have links to all of our social media there. We've got articles written by the panelists. We've got uh, links to the episodes. We've got links to the GUI precap that Bruce does for us every week. All sorts of cool stuff you can find at GUIPodcast.com. So if you want to kind of follow us and join the conversation, that's the best way to do it. And uh, now... On to the episode. I'm very excited about oh, this. Oh, so much fun. Yep. So much fun. I was trying to figure out exactly how to go about doing an episode about horror tropes because it's not like a movie episode where we can talk about like the, the you know, photography or like the directing style or the acting or anything like that. This is very much just kind of a bringing examples about as to kind of our favorite tropes in horror. So I, I think the best way to do it is kind of go round table on kind of bring up a trope that we want to talk about and then just kind of um, shoot the shit about it a little bit. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, because it, the, one of the hardest parts about this is there's plenty of subject material to talk about, but so many movies combine the tropes these days. You, you've got such a combination and it, where did it start? I, yeah. I think that I, I feel like we should try to go back as far as possible. Yeah. And we'll talk about kind so. of the origin of some of these, uh, right. these ridiculous tropes, but uh, does anybody have one they want to start with? No oh, crap. Let's, let's take a look at our list because I had notes and I left I mean, them outside. I, I got one to start with. Go then. then. Go, yeah. You're, go for so, it. you're go supposed for it. to lead us, okay. sir. Uh, well, the the one Master. that's like the most prevalent, <laughs> especially especially in the slasher genre and especially in Friday the Thirteenth, is if you decide to get jiggy with it, if you get naked, if you show your boobies, and and then you you mm -hmm. let someone play with your boobies, and then you go to have sexy sexy time in a tent or in a cabin, you gonna die. Like that's pretty much <laughs> sometimes it. while you're having sexy time, sometimes yeah, right yes. in the midst of it. Like occasionally you'll get like a flagpole through your chest and your lover's chest at the same time. Or I, I believe a machete has machete, gone through, yes. gone through the bed. A spear. Several machete have a uh, yeah, yes. spear. Spear. A spear. Yeah, it has happened. Mm. And uh, I wanted to kind of dig into that a little bit because it, t it really kind of hammers in the age old thing about like teenagers and sex and the, the taboo of having sex premaritally or, mm -hmm. you know, at, when you're younger than you should be quote unquote, uh, due to parents choices for you on, on, on the doing it, you know, uh, teen, teen, teen hijinks as it right. were. Well, and you know, because we know Halloween with Michael Myers kind of, you know, was the, the spearhead for the slasher in general. I think where the, the, the sexy co-ed thing came into play was with actually Friday the 13th mm -hmm. because that was the whole premise of why Jason drowned in the lake because all the counselors were it making it out and you know, make, making it out or making <laughs> they it out, whatever. They but but paying... that's why his mom was so pissed is because they weren't, they weren't watching my son. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of, I think, where a lot of, well, sexy time has always been there in horror movies, period. But see, that's why, like, I didn't, buy into the remake of Friday the 13th because in 2009 if like you were pissed off at like uh a camp not watching your kid and your kid drowns you just give them an incredibly shitty Yelp review like that <laughs> which would be a way lackluster Friday the 13th movie where it's just like 
Mama Voorhees sitting there with her phone angrily typing into it. just scrolling yeah. through the yeah, end going, oh, I'm not going to go to that camp. My kid yeah. died at their camp. Yeah. Yeah, right. One star. <laughs> One and a half stars. He was kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, their Salisbury steak was excellent, though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know. Yeah, some excellent brown gravy on that stuff, you know. Like. <laughs> but the grits might have been a little hard. Yeah. <laughs> Dead, dead they kid. were dry. Dead they kids, were... but the food's all right. Yeah. The food's solid. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would go there for a good hearty breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Come for the meal, leave before yeah. the swimming starts. Hey. <laughs> that needs to be on the sign for Camp Crystal Lake. It's like dead kids, but solid food. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. I think we can get away with that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, that's extended further than just uh, kids doing it. It's kids that are partying, kids that are uh, acting up in one way or another. I mean, you see that throughout a number the, of movies. The, the acts of sin, yes. basically. Yes. Anything anything that's considered. And the whole idea of, and I think the slasher films really tr- kind of hammered all of that home that, you know, the sins of kids will get you in trouble sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I was going to even throw in there. They've even thrown in like gluttony. And there, where, where you've had like some of the, the people like eating or something, and food is always involved, mixed with blood. Yeah, you know, so it's it's everywhere. So yeah, it's just a matter of like if kids act up in any way, shape, or form, it's always the innocent that ends up being the uh, the what we should probably talk about next. The final Friday's girl. Yes. coming for you. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not really sure why it ended up being that it was always like a innocent lady that became like the the champion girl at the end of these slasher movies but it's it's pretty prevalent throughout i mean i was gonna just say like you know it it always sets you up where you have the the big burly guy and you're like oh that motherfucker is gonna last and now nah, he's like second or third victim you know Gone. like so oh, well i was uh you made me think of something else real quick that i'll throw out there which a great movie that makes fun of that particularly particularly specifically oh, i know exactly what you're gonna say feast yep Yep. Oh, yep. oh yeah, where, yeah. Where they actually sit there and go, the hero, and he gets just like totally demolished <laughs> five minutes later, and then the next hero, and they hit <laughs> like thirty seconds in, one of the guys gets just his yeah, head he, cut yes, off, his he head has head that, that yeah. hero, <laughs> that hero like appearance. He's like, all right, I'm taking charge of this shit, and then oh, what a, yep. What a and Jason Mewes, and Jason Mewes does have a cameo in the movie as well. Yep. And Henry Rollins, Henry Rollins, and Henry Rollins in pink sweatpants. Yes, as a motivational <laughs> speaker. Yes. What a, but. Going back to our final girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I was going to say, like, uh, again, my go-to for that is always going to be Laurie, Laurie Strode from the original Halloween. Sure. Sure. Um, and it's the, the way you said it, how it's always the little innocent girl or anything. I think it's just the very keeping your head on the shoulder smart girl. So the studious one. Yes. Yeah. The studious one is is usually the final girl. See, my my main issue with her is the is that she survived, and that's great. But the first girl in Friday the 13th actually chops off the head of the killer, like where you get surviving the serial killer or the stalker mm-hmm. to actually taking the motherfucker out. Like, so and that's where it kind of raised up to another level with the like, fair enough with that. Yeah. Well, he had final girls before the slasher movies. But if you look at like the big ones for uh, for this, this slasher genre, I mean, at the end of Texas Chainsaw. Uh, yeah, the girl, the girl rolling away in the truck that's like screaming her face off. Who's though she survived only physically, like she is <laughs> fucked yes. for the rest of her what life. What was it? They, they talk about backstory on that where she's basically in a psych ward the rest of her oh, life. I mean, um, why wouldn't that. you be? I know exactly. Like, that's like no fair. Uh, and then there's of course Friday the Thirteenth with her in the canoe at the end. Um, and yeah, and then 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 Jason, Nancy, yeah, Nancy, don't yeah, about Nancy. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy yeah. helps you know defeat Freddy and yeah, yep. That it's it's so prevalent. I was gonna say, actually, even to the point that recording and filming Texas Chainsaw Massacre took a role on the actress herself. Mm-hmm. So like that scene where she goes running into the uh, the gas station and like breaks down right there in the gas station, just breaks down in tears. The actress had been worked so hard and been running from a guy with a chainsaw all day long that she actually just gave up and could not take it anymore and toby hooper was like keep them keep them because <laughs> toby hooper's smart i mean yeah, yeah, i mean which, at the end of it she was yeah like so yeah with sure, yeah. let's raise let's raise the glass for toby, to hooper. toby hooper yeah, yeah. good yeah. call good call chin chin <laughs> but those are the kind of things that you have to do on a limited budget i mean even limited budget th- that was a kubrick move i mean kubrick did the same thing yeah the shining 
Mm-hmm. Just working as actors to death to the point where they seemed exhausted because they were fucking exhausted. And, yeah. And, and, you know, they you start to crack. You start to lose it. And then you get real horror. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with uh, Hitchcock did the same thing with Psycho um, with the bathroom scene is that he ended up, I, if I remember correctly, was the knife wielder for that scene. Yeah. I know uh, Scott did that with the first alien. He when he did the chest brusher scene, that was nobody knew what nobody was happening. Knew, all that. And he got like actual reactions. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, oh, shit. I didn't know we had the budget <laughs> yeah. for that. Whoa. Right. Yeah. Well, it's not, you're not thinking budget at that point. You're thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They just blew the whole budget. <laughs> well, there you go. Fine. Ruin it. So Ruin. Why, why do we think it is that it's always like a, a more innocent woman that tends to be the, the one that survives all the massacring? Less distraction. Just less distraction. Just, I, I mean, again, you, you look at all the, the, the high points of it. It's yeah. She, she likes the boy over there who ends up getting killed, but she likes him, but doesn't want to talk to him more worried about, not necessarily schoolwork. That's kind of how it started, but more concerned with other things in life. Think about the idea of the the guy who's supposed to be the hero. You know, at first you think he's gonna he's gonna be the one. He's gonna do this. He's gonna make it through. He gets cocky because he's like, yeah, yeah, all I right, got this. Th- th- I got this. I'm gonna take care of this woman. Yeah. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be the man. I'm gonna rock up. No. <laughs> well, I think that also leads into that uh, horror movies, for the most part, they lean on stereotypes for a lot of the characters because they don't have a lot of time for the character development. They need uh, kind of a cookie cutter character that you kind of get the gist of who they are as a person from the get go. So they can just go go running with the murder. You know, they can just get started with the gore and with the with the male side of it. The, um, there's not going to be a male uh, final girl, as it were, because uh, part of it is there's there's oftentimes a part where the hero man sacrifices himself to save the final girl right towards the end of the film and that shows Mm -hmm. kind of the stereotype of the the machismo man that's willing to you know do what he can to protect the women you know and so that's that's definitely playing into that tropiness or stereotypes of character a little bit that he's willing to you know be the badass that is gonna just kick ass and take names until he's dead to protect the people in his group right so yeah so it ends up being the one that can't help this girl that gets to survive at the end. Well, one of the movies I'd like to reference is You're Next, uh, which I hope at this point everybody here's seen. But Honestly not. Uh, well, It's, it's, it's on a, the list, unfortunately. It's a play on, but, well, know. we'll just leave this, this woman as the final one, and right, that's right. the biggest mistake that happens. Because, yeah, they, when you see it, you'll understand. Right, no, fair enough. Because yeah. typically, and, and I'm sorry, I know you're up next, but I'm just going to say that typically the final girl also, for a lot of more modern stuff, tends they they become the badass. Let's just say that the guys in it are the pussies, and she's the fucking badass. Nice. Fair enough. Nice. Fair enough. I thought of one exception to the, to the rule that the final girl. Huh. Evil Dead. Evil Dead, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the cocky machismo man ends up but, still being well, the cocky yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and of course they fix that with the remake, where then they go, "All right, let's get it back to having a female as the." That's final. true. Yeah. yeah. Although from the get go, you knew she was going to be the final girl, and in, in the remake, <laughs> not just because of the original, but and she was Ash, but but because like she was a badass from the get get go. She didn't have any like development where she was this like scared wayfish woman that ended up becoming a badass throughout the the ins and outs like Lori from Halloween ends up being throughout the Halloween series where she gets just used to all the fucking terror. <laughs> yeah. And at the, at the end, she doesn't know, fuck this shit. Like I got to kill my brother. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Which is what I appreciate about H2O is that, yeah. you know, in the first two, she's pretty much just running away, scared yeah. and able to survive. And in H2O, she's like, no, fuck this. Yeah. I'm she, taking this she, motherfucker she's out. She's like, God damn it. I hid from you for 20 years. Exactly. Fuck it. We're done. I'm done with your shit. Yeah. And yeah. So sick of being scared. <laughs> sick of being scared, man. This, Mike Myers left the dishes in the sink one too many times. She was done with it. Make it have you have you seen that Hispanic Halloween? Yes, it's amazing. okay. So I yeah, just, yeah. that video is really funny for our listeners. There's so, a YouTube video of if Halloween was uh, done with a Hispanic family, and it goes more like the the mother is chasing around Mike Myers and the dude like, with a flip flop with a flip flop. Yes. <laughs> so my wife's family's Hispanic. That's terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> you're not like mad at it. It's more like, no, that's legitimate. That's... You're right. Like, no, me, huh? <laughs> I like how you broke bad with the Spanish on that too. Like, just, just throwing in the little slang a little bit. 
Now, uh, anyway, we've, we've uh, mm-hmm. talked about character uh, tropes a little bit. Um, and we're going to bounce back to that as well. But um, a lot of the time, the the environment that's chosen for for the movie is has a lot to do with it. And one of the most like tropey choices for a movie is to have a cabin out in the woods or near a lake uh, that a bunch of college kids go and go and party. We're going out for spring break. Spring break. Oh, what, what, what was that movie? Oh, yeah, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Which, honestly, we know that movie's going to get brought up, I don't know how many times on this There's episode. So that. Because it, the way, thank you, Joss Whedon, for yet another golden egg of just wonderfulness. Well, he co-wrote just, and produced, but it was uh, Drew Goddard. Uh, Drew Goddard that uh, did the directing on that. It was Joss that that got oh. the balls behind it. Come on, I mean, I mean that that reeked of Whedon humor. <laughs> it did, and and that's the great thing about it was that it was just it was technically a horror movie, but we all knew the tropes enough that you could just sit there and go, oh, they that's literally good. have a board of the, the tropes. Oh yeah, right. They're exactly. betting on like. Hmm. And we may or may not have a scene from Cabin in the Woods to read later. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, look at that you. Is, that is something that may be happening there. Um, but yeah, Cabin in the Woods really broke it down as to just like the tropes in general, but especially right. the Cabin in the Woods thing. For those, uh, we're going to be spoiling like a shit Multiple ton of horror movies. Everything. Yes. It's been enough time. They should have seen it. All right. All right yeah. Yeah. We're Seriously. not, we're not, Get over um, it. we're not going to be spoiling the new it movie or anything, but, um, uh, any anything recent we'll lay off. Do, of, do you but... want to talk about it a little bit? Or... No. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, sure. No, I'm good. I'm good. Because we all um, float. I, I think here. you already talked to his therapist this week about nah. that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but with Cabin in the Woods, it really it really hammered it home. Just this idea of you know the kids partying in a cabin for the weekend and having a great time, and they have the whole setup yeah. and them having a blast. And there's even that there's always the harbinger. That warns them that there's nothing but death. There's nothing but death out there. Yeah, no like man going out there. <laughs> um, there's the guy at the gas station uh, yeah. that, that warns them ahead of time. Can I, I rewatch something again? That in the Harbinger for this in 2001 Maniacs, Travis Tritt. Yeah, <laughs> Travis Tritt was a Harbinger in 2001 Maniacs. Really? Yes. The, the, you're gonna be dead by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a trope that I think is is created out of necessity for the plot is that instead of them, you know, there is always the, like I ran into cabin in the woods a little bit where they read backstory from a book they found, but yeah. to really get the exposition as to why it's dangerous for you to go there, you need to have that one character. It's like, Oh, you didn't hear what happened back in aught eight or whatever yeah. that, you right. Know, there was a crazy like murder family that like, <laughs> <laughs> they went around and like stabbed people to death with possum heads or you know some dumb shit. And... They done hung Doctor Satan from the tree. Yeah, <laughs> and he won't there the next day. Yeah. <laughs> but that was you good. Look at that. any of those movies. That's Ed, you're gonna have that one guy that yeah that tells the, the kind of the backstory on the area and, and everybody's gonna think he's a kook. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, right. Well, I mean, it's just any any good horror. Uh, I mean, that's where you, you got to have the proper foreshadowing. I mean, that's all it is. Is the foreshadowing where. It tells you enough that something fucked up is going to happen, but you don't know necessarily how or why per se. But because if you just go into your your, it, it ends up leaving a horror movie lackluster if you don't have that person. Well, and the gas station was the perfect choice uh, for Cabin in the Woods because it hits on a number of things. It hits on Texas Chainsaw. It hits on Hills Have Eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, it hits on um, oh, what was the other one that I was thinking of? Uh, Tucker and Dale did it too. Yeah, they or had the, the gas that, station or the convenience store. The convenience store, yeah. yeah. Uh, why can't um, House of a Thousand Corpses? House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, I was like, yep. oh, shit. Yeah. It was uh, it was on the tip of my tongue. It was gone <laughs> for a second there. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, but we already talked about Rob Zombie stealing everybody else's shit anyway. So, but the gas station is the perfect <laughs> setup because if you're going into an area that's supposed <laughs> to be secluded so that there is no help nearby, the last thing that you're going to hit before getting there is going to be a gas station to right. get beer, to get ice, to get gas. You know, all the things you need. To go out, especially in the if you're going to the middle of nowhere in the desert, you know. Yeah, no shit. That's yeah. all that's out there is occasional gas stations. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Some vultures. Yeah, I've, I've been through the desert yeah. uh, coming out here from the West Coast, and yeah, there's just there's like a gas station or two. My my <laughs> wife grew up in the middle of the Mojave, and yeah, what I don't understand is like, so do you just live at the gas station? Because like, there's no towns here. Like, it's just you, like, just the gas station. And well, then nothing. Some of them, like in the hills, have eyes, and like, well, I, I should say, I'm thinking of the remake at least. But um, a lot of them, that they, some of them did. 
Like if if you look the way some of the movies are done, that like there's like a bed and like basically a bedroom. That's, that's commitment there, because I mean, like I I don't, wouldn't want to sleep and live at work. You know, like, yeah. You want to get that separation. Yeah. And of course, you'd write that guy off as being the weirdo because he's like, man, this guy's been out here in the middle of the <laughs> desert by himself forever. And Nobody, probably don't know what. Nobody's the, that committed. To he don't gas. know what the right. fuck's going on. No well, he's more. probably huffing the gas as well. <laughs> yeah. To well, tell the truth, just him and his so. dog, and you're like, you know that dog has licked peanut butter off his balls. You know, like, you know that's happened. <laughs> yeah, he, you know what his Friday night is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not listening to us. <laughs> hey, Fido. <laughs> uh, I got the grape the, jelly. This the, week. Oh, don't no. Oh. Red Rover, Red Rover, send Jif right over. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> and on that. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, take a hard turn here away from like uh, lone, creepy please gas do, station guys. Please do, please do. From to, peanut uh, butter uh, licking. <laughs> another kind of creepy that definitely freaks me out a little bit are creepy fucking children. Yes. Yeah. It's become more prevalent in since probably post 2000 to have movies with creepy kids. But I mean, I think the Japanese really are, are leading the pack. On yeah. The creepy kid movies. So. Bet- between the grudge and, um, I always think Juwan, but, um, yeah, Juwan, what, um, that, that was, uh, but what was the American, the ring, ring. the ring, the ring yeah. there. So, which is funny. Yeah. Cause that kid, the, the, the main kid in there is just weird as shit, but actually isn't, it's the woman that's yeah. more creepy, but yeah. him to sit there. Meow. You know, does the meow thing? Yeah, just, I, don't know. <laughs> I got a good one. Okay. The brood. The brood. Dude, yeah. You want to talk about some what? fucked I, up, I didn't even weird, think about that creepy one, kids? Was that was that Cronenberg? Oh God, I don't remember. I don't that. remember. I, I'll have to look that up here. But yeah, the brood. That's that's a yeah. old eighties flick, I think. And it just when you said creepy kids, I was like, what's that damn movie with all the strange like clone kids that were. Oh, the brood. Well, if you go and back, even... giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> but even uh, go back to a couple of the the mainstream staples is the yeah. Village of the Damned and Children of the Corn. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I'm talking about black and white. A uh, Village of the Damned, not um before Shitty. crippling Superman. Um, yeah. Village of the Damned. Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty bad. That one, yeah, that is pretty rough. Yeah, the brood so. was 1979 was when it came out. Okay. And Cronenberg. Yep, that was a Cronenberg. Okay. Nice. It was. That's why. But yeah, so, there's something about because kids are are in most cases, even in horror movies, kind of the symbol of innocence, right? So when you take that that stereotype of innocent kid, and then you just shove like pure fucking evil, like Omen style, into those kids, uh, it yeah. ends up pretty fucked up. Speaking of, have you guys seen Little Evil yet? Yes. It's on Netflix. So no. it's a Netflix original with Adam Scott. Yeah, it's Adam oh, Scott so in basically good. like you just see that. He basically is about is uh, just gotten married uh, to a woman who's got a, a kid, and the kid is straight up Damien from the Omen. Yeah, is the Antichrist. like from the the loins of the devil. Like he so. even has a little like page boy cut like Damien had with the like same outfit and everything. God damn, Netflix is overloading me with shit because like that's the fourth show besides Stranger well, Things. Well, it's a movie. Too. It's a movie. It's a okay, movie. movie. But so still, you don't. Yeah. Still, they just load up shit, so they're covered for. I a think while. Netflix I'm is just going OG up up. with a, most of their stuff now. <laughs> yeah. So, well, but they're bringing it. They're bringing so yeah. many good titles out there. I mean, the Little Evil was so much fun. It was. It reminded mm-hmm. me a lot of. Uh, if you haven't read it, I would thoroughly suggest it. Uh, Good Omens, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, that I think is actually being uh, created now. Like they, they're actually oh, in really? production. David Tennant is involved Ooh. with the project, and basically the story is that um, a regular baby and the Antichrist ac- accidentally get switched at birth. What? Where, like they meant to switch at birth, uh, but then like the evil nun didn't know the other evil nun already switched them, so he switched them back. So, like, the Antichrist is with just, like, a normal family, and there is no, like, like helpers helping lead the way towards Satan. It's just, like, the Antichrist is just, like, in a warm, loving family with a normal dog, and, like, everything's great, and he's, like, being raised normally, and he turns out mostly the same. And all the, the evil harbingers are around this normal kid that doesn't have any powers and isn't the Antichrist, and they're trying to, like, raise him to be evil, and he's just like, I'm just a kid. Like, this is fucked up. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. That's going to be good. Yeah. I don't want to sacrifice goats today, Mommy. (laughs) 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 Yeah, good Creepy kids, yeah, that's always gotten me significantly. Well, um, again, I've I've got to reiterate on Children of the Corn. 
Um, because Children of the Corn weren't just like it wasn't like psychic powers like Village of the Damned or some of these others where there's powers involved. No, these kids were just fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean there there was like a demon thing at the end, but it didn't give them powers. They're they're going around one day they all decide, Well, mommy and daddy gotta go. And we're on our own. Thanks. Yeah. And as soon as you turn eighteen, you're killed. What the fuck? Which as a teenager, <laughs> that sounded awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, the, okay. you, Control the town myself. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. I, I don't never gotta grow yeah. up. It's, it's like Peter Pan. Tell motherfucker. me to go to bed at early night. But now, <laughs> an adult, uh, as an adult, I'm thinking about a town full of like kids under eighteen. I'm like, that sounds fucking terrifying. <laughs> I, I will take the long way around. They can Thank have you. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank it's you. theirs. So yours. Go. You know what? Fuck you, kid. Don't yeah. want me coming in town. Not a problem. Cool. I just small. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're listening to your your Justin Bieber's and your Taylor Swifts over there in your, in your kid town. <laughs> <laughs> go go have weird go have weird things go on and eventually the horror movie will ensue and i want yeah. nothing they're to gonna do have with a flag it, right? with the fidget spinner like that's that's our <laughs> i want nothing call. to do with good it and nothing to do with being on the list that comes from being there no i, I went into their record store Never mind, they didn't have good records. They didn't have records. Yeah. <laughs> it was all codes for digital exactly. downloads. That's all it was. <laughs> it was just uh. one computer with YouTube up. <laughs> That's all it was. Nope. You know, when you bring up creepy kids, the other one that always kind of weirds me out with creepy kids is zombie films when a kid turns into a zombie. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, yeah. oh, crap. Now I got to kill a kid. <laughs> which the Dawn of the Dead remake is that's your first introduction to a zombie is the little girl coming up. And yeah. You're like, oh, come on in here. What's going on? And she walks up and, and just jumps. And just yeah. fucks him up. And like, that's your first zombie. That, that little fucking kid. Mm-hmm. Well, they took it one further by having zombie newborn. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that got a little. Imagine breastfeeding that thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. He's a biter. He's a biter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but. My nipples I, have never looked the same. <laughs> <laughs> the most heart wrenching one, though, I've got to say, from the first episode of Walking Dead. Yeah, from where Rick had to do, like he still doesn't quite know what's going on, and that little girl walks up with the little stuffed teddy bear. Yeah, look it up online. They had the hundredth episode for the season opener. Yep. Yeah, and the little girl, uh, the, the the actress yeah. that played the little girl in, in that first episode returned as a zombie in episode 100 fully grown as an adult as a zombie nice. in, yeah. the, in the uh, yep. episode well, they actually had um where they did shot for shot from when Rick's first episode to um Carl where literally he takes his hat off looks under the car it's shot for shot the first episode to the 100th which is pretty impressive yeah. Yeah. they brought back that girl so that's yeah. good that's good so th- that is such a cool little like nod to the fans of like just how far it's gone. But but let's Kirkman and all of them are they, they know how to do a, a good sure. nod yeah, to yeah. everything that whether it's a trope or anything else. They they know how to give the proper respect. Oh absolutely. So. But yeah, there are so many tropes that were given birth to with the advent of Night of the Living Dead and the zombie yeah. genre. I mean the Dead Rising is not new to the zombie genre. It's been happening no. with, you know, uh the Zombie films like White Zombie mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. of course, with the Draclias and, and the like. I was going to say, we, we actually, I meant to bring it up on the Romero episode as well. One of the biggest differences with the zombie eras, like when um the big thing that Romero did different, usually the old like White Zombie and everything was like voodoo, magical something. Night of the Living Dead was actually based on what, as far as we know, from science mm-hmm. or something else occurring, Almost not viral. magical. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's kind of what kicked that off. And another new thing he did with something that was already there. Now, um, we would be remiss to have a trope episode without talking about the tropiest of tropes in horror. I'm talking the motherfucking haunted house. <sighs> that is, I mean, I I think there are more I, haunted house movies out there than zombie movies, and that's oh, a tough f- fair thing to fair enough. I mean, from the beginning of horror movies, pretty much haunted houses were part of it. I mean, you looked at even the first mashup was Castle of Frankenstein with Wolfman and Frankenstein was in this like haunted castle. You know, yeah. I mean. It, it's just part of the deal. Well, and then Vincent Price taking it with House on Haunted Hill. Well, and Horror um, Hotel. Horror and, Hotel. And that, that, I mean, yeah. there were a shit ton of Haunted House movies back in the 1950s and 60s. That was like 
the, the thing. go-to. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, but is this house haunted? <laughs> sure. It what is. are some of our favorite haunted house movies? I well, I kind of said mine. I mean, okay. House on Haunted yeah, Hill, say, like OG go Vincent with... Price. Yeah, not the remake. Not no. the remake. No, 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 that was that was an attempt, but no. Yeah, I was a big fan of the original Amityville. Yes. good call, good call. With uh, mm-hmm. was it uh, James Brolin? I... James Brolin and uh, Margot Kidder. Margot yes. Kidder. Yes. Right, right, right. It's kind of not necessarily a haunted house, but The Shining. Like oh, that it, counts. It, it's, it's yeah, a, it's that totally a, a haunted establishment. Because yeah, the way will. Kubrick made yeah. that setting, I mean, I wouldn't want to fucking stay there. Oh, so. fuck, eerie. No. Shit. no. An- another Sorry. one that absolutely terrified me as a kid, and it wasn't just because of the clown doll, but fucking Poltergeist. <laughs> oh, Poltergeist <laughs> I was, was damn it, that was so, on one of my notes that I meant so to bring up. Yeah, damn good. Um, yeah. Do you remember the scene with the clown jumps up on the bed? Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I do. I the, 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 the arms, ex- the, oh, the arms extend out and kind of wrap around them. And... <laughs> yeah, I just got really woozy and just woke, <laughs> woke up an hour later. What's that like, behind you? <laughs> what happened? I don't remember. Well, woke up when he's being eaten by the tree. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> okay. God. And what was that fucking goo on him after he got like pulled out of the tree? And tree looked, spit. It, sap. It looked like it was tree sap. spit. It, spit. It looked like tree <laughs> jelly. Like, it wasn't quite sappy. Wasn't... Well, what would you call a poltergeist a in a tree, tree eating a kid? I mean, do you know what really happened? Well, every, do time, you? every time I've been eaten by a haunted tree, uh, it doesn't look quite like that. I'm just saying. He I just don't know what splinters. you're doing with that tree, but... <laughs> Speaking of which, um, on HBO right now, they have a uh, Spielberg documentary. I've and he it. actually goes yeah. into where he was a kid. He was terrified of this tree outside his room. And that inspired that scene yeah. in Poltergeist. But yeah, if you haven't seen that documentary, it's... It's fantastic. So oh, long nice. thing with Poltergeist is that it was technically directed by Toby Hooper, <laughs> though a and lot of Spielberg. people say it was directed by Spielberg because he did produce it and it was his project. He couldn't direct because he was already obligated for another project and he couldn't uh, because of contract yeah. work on Poltergeist at the same time. But he was there constantly and he was constantly giving advice. And a lot of people said that he basically directed it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Toby Hooper was technically the director. So it, Which, it goes back and forth. That's unaccredited or not. I mean, it, it has a stank all over it anyways. Oh, so, God, I mean. Just some of the filming styles in that movie are well, so Spielberg. A- again, just to throw out, you know, how we all feel about effects. I mean, it was still great practical effects for everything. Mm-hmm. There was very limited, well, Special effects still weren't very special back then, but yeah. they, they were decent and used just right. Even if it is just tree snot. <laughs> tree snot, yeah. <laughs> well, you had the big white thing towards the end that came out of the closet or whatever it was. You know, it was oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the weird dog thing. Now, one thing interesting is that Haunted Houses is one of those kind of prime subjects they use. And you can go as far back, you know, as House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. Yeah. And even as modern as, I mean, I'm not encouraging this movie, but Paranormal Activity made a shitload of, you know, biz- did a shitload of business. <laughs> and, I mean, it still goes oh. into that category. I yeah, it does. really liked the first Paranormal Activity. I got to see it in the movie theater with, with Groots, uh, one of our regular panelists. We went and saw it together, and we both went out, and we said that that was one of the most suspenseful, suspenseful movies we had seen in years around that time. It really nailed the suspense factor. It, the scares weren't really scares so much, ex- no. except for one or two here and there. It was more of just like this feeling of dread the entire time. But don't you feel like everybody's kicking themselves going, God damn it, I could have made a movie where I just move a chair and have people react. Like, I yeah. mean, the budget yeah. on that's, you know, all right, now pull the chair. Now hit the mic really loud and make the sound. And like, it made a shit ton of money. A and, shit ton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and because, I mean, I, the first time I watched it was on DVD, so we actually, we kind of went fast-forwarded through part of it. <laughs> That's you cheating. Know, well, we were watching it, you know, you watch it for a certain stuff, then you would stop it, rewind a little bit, kind of watch it, and it and it had that great buildup, but certain things were just lackluster, but it was not until the sequels where they tried to give this whole backstory on stuff where you're just I like, come with on. That's really? a movie I'd say you need to see in a theater because watching it at home and Fair. fast forwarding, I mean. And yeah. let me fucking tell you, I get so mad at people talking in the theater except for Paranormal Activity because after the first or second time that they showed the like night vision yeah. and then shit happened. And then so that when it went to night vision like the third time, 
there were people in the theater like, oh, fuck, not again. Like getting all stressed out before anything even happens. <laughs> see, now that's and, good. And there's like nervous chuckling and shit. And you see people like grabbing each other like, fuck, I, don't, I can't deal with this shit. Oh, yeah. The see, right crowd with that. And you see something moving. And you hear the crowd go, oh, shit. And you're like, yeah. yeah that's a good that, horror that, movie. And it made it way more fun to just watch people's reactions. I'll tell you that when, uh, when my wife and I went and saw it, recent, the, the recent one. That we had a lot of that, and even even her and I, there were certain scenes like they walk into the room and there's clowns and this, that, and the other, and we're just like, no, no, <laughs> no, I'm I'm not ready for it. I'm not doing this. <laughs> no. Um, oh god, I don't want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> there's something so primal about speaking of it, about having a movie where we talked about evil kids, but about a movie where kids are in danger and they're the main characters you know that there are ones that are seeking out you know to to end the the horror that is occurring mm -hmm. uh it is a perfect example of that of just this group of kids they're like mm -hmm. shit's going down the adults don't believe us because adults you know aren't willing to accept things that are out of the norm and so we've got to take care of this shit and uh it the original and and the amazing uh new one just nailed the ever-living shit out of it and that really, that even plays into some of the, you know, people and their beliefs of the idea that kids have a better perception of things that are paranormal because the mm -hmm. idea that they haven't been told that it's not real, the whole idea, like a baby can see a ghost, but yet, you know, once they come to a certain age, they're like, oh, there's nothing there. You, it's a learned behavior. The idea of the actual paranormal that, you know, yeah. they're missing or you're missing it as an adult. Well, and that's been used in so many different mm -hmm. films, that, oh, that concept. True story. Okay. Even within recent months, you know, because all we, we do co-sleeping with both the boys. It's all four of us basically in one bed. Fine. So be it. We, we sleep well. But there are times where Logan and I are just chilling. We're hanging out because the other two are asleep, but we are not quite tired yet. We may have the TV on, whatever. And there is a certain corner, upper corner, and the, uh, the ceiling in the room that he will point to and talk to every so often. And I ask him, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, you know, what's going on? You know, because, again, I have this that, – that thought about how kids can see shit that adults can't. And most of the time it's just, shh, don't worry, daddy. I pooped. I just pooped a little when you did that. You know, yeah. don't you – know, stop. Oh, my – daughter my two-year-old daughter um will wake up at like three in the morning and just start laughing and giggling like somebody's entertaining her and i'm like i'm not fucking going in there no. <laughs> Fuck that. It's, it, they're not Sorry, crying like, they're not crying like, she's Leave being them. entertained by something see, but i'm not gonna go in there to find out uh, yes, what's entertaining see. her just as long as she's happy there you go you don't have yeah. to pay a ghost babysitter i'm That's just saying, what I'm saying. truth yeah I, I love this this dichotomy of you know people with kids they're like I've watched too many horror movies. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. No. Nope. <laughs> I like Hunter's like, you're on your own, toddler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until you start yeah. crying. Right now, you're having a good time. No reason for me to Mon interrupt whatever's going on yeah. in there. Oh, no, no, because Monsters I'm- Monsters, Inc.'s happening. All right. Good. <laughs> no, because I'm in the same room. Like, I'm sitting there, like, I may be laying on my stomach, and he's, like, beside me. So I'm facing, like, and there's a wall right there where- Whatever. So, and of course, he's pointing where what would be behind me. So, of course, I'm sitting going, all right, I got to turn around and take a look. <laughs> I got to take a look. Just fuck. And, and some of that's from Okay, us. okay. We're, we're clear. We're clear. So. And then some of that's from us watching so many goddamn horror movies yes. that we're like, that's nah, probably nothing. But I've also seen a lot of shit where it could be something. I right. have the footage in my head of this, like, weird, drippy, zombie ghost monster behind Scotty. And then he's like, what is it, baby? And the kid's like, ha, ah, it's a cute monster. He's waving at it. And Scotty turns around and is looking right at it as the monster's like, Ugh. and he's like, I don't see anything, baby. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Right back and... <laughs> it's one of the scenes. <laughs> no. It's one of the scenes I love in Monster Squad when the kid's like, there's a monster in my closet. And he's like, oh. Yeah. And he opens it up. He's like, ooh. And literally you see the, the, the mummy. mummy. <laughs> and, and the kid's like, what the fuck, dad? And that. And I'm going to take that even lead into a, a, a semi trope. It's just something I've, I've just maybe because of the movies I've been watching lately that I've noticed where a lot of the, the cinematography is where someone is like the camera's basically in their face. They're, they're, they're doing something. And then you see like a door open behind them. It could be a creature. It could be like a body hanging from a hook or something. But the way the cinematography does, you can see that they're like, 
something happened behind me, but I really do not want to look <laughs> behind me. And it's kind of become that, like, you know something fucked up is behind you, but it only will affect you if you look at it. Another right behind you thing that I love that it's become such a trope that movies nowadays will use the expectation of the trope to turn it on its head and not be yeah. is the mirror thing where you're looking in the bathroom mirror and there's nothing and you open up the medicine ah, cabinet and you Every reach time. in and grab a thing and then you close it and then all of a sudden there's a thing behind you like a Candyman style. Yeah. And that has been used to death so much that now when they're looking in the mirror and then they like drop the medicine and the camera follows them down as they pick up the medicine or something comes back up to the mirror you're expecting the thing to be there and when it's not it's like oh but then they have the secondary jump where something happens from another angle yeah elsewhere yep. that gets them and you're like oh you fuckers you know <laughs> <laughs> that's good but that's the joy of these tropes is that if it gets ingrained into our our expectations to a point they can play with that they can they don't they can use that as a means to get us unsteady enough to jump at, at right you know at the timing of it being something else and that's just smart writing honestly um that that's why i like some of these movies that like Tucker and Dale versus evil and, uh, mm-hmm. and Kevin mm-hmm. Woods, where they play with those tropes in, in the, it's just the idea the way. that, okay, the mirror opens, it closes, then they turn, there's still nothing. Then they turn around and then something happens. Yeah. You know, the, it's like, okay, how far are you going to yeah, like, drag yeah, yeah, yeah. me well, out on this one? That, that even leads into like one of the bullet points you made Hobbit where, um, like the lights go out and you have to go get the fuse box in the dark basement or something, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. is something going to pop out right when the lights come back on? Is it going to happen when they turn around? You just don't fucking and know. They, they always grab the worst flashlight ever where they get yeah. right down the steps and about midway down the steps. They go, oh, this thing's not even fucking working right. God, what a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made it just, I've assumed that all these horror movies exist in a universe where there was an EMP that happened like 10 years before. So all electronics are kind of like really shitty. Like that's why cars don't start half the time <laughs> and, and flashlights just like go out and like the phones just stop working and the radios go dead. Like it's just all because well, it's like, this, or come this, on on their own. That, that come just, on their own. It's just, that just depends if it's a ghost story or not though, because if it's a ghost story, it's supposed to fuck with the EMP. If it's, a slasher or something. Yeah, that's just poor quality. So, <laughs> I mean, but do you think somebody as they're walking down the basement and the flashlight goes out goes, fuck, I should have spent more than a dollar on these batteries. Like now <laughs> this is how I die because I want right. to save $2. I shouldn't have gone to the super saver. That's what I'm saying. I like, should have gone well, to... That's the last thought is, fuck, dollar store batteries. God, yeah, yeah. Like, I should have invested in fucking Duracell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good Duracell commercial. Yeah, like, they, just yeah. a hatch on the head. Should have gone up. God damn it. <laughs> All of my batteries are from the dollar store. <laughs> that I'm fucked. Prepare. That would be the that would be the perfect one. We're going down the stairs, and then like it blinks out and it opens up the flashlight, and it's like you know like bargain bin brand batteries, and then shakes it, and then it lights up just to see a zombie in front of him, and he goes, "Fuck Duracell." <laughs> I think we just yes. sold them an ad. Yeah, don't, yeah, we did. don't get caught in the dark. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> Spinning gold. <laughs> spinning gold. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry to ruin the moment, but I had to make sure that we do give, we were talking about creepy children, which is still involved with some of the like talking zombie and stuff. We did not mention Pet Cemetery. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, there's, there's nothing but death up there. <laughs> there's also the harbinger in that. Oh, too. there you go. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. But I mean, that cre- kid, creepy by the kid, way. Stephen King, you, you got to have well, it. Stephen King with creepy kids, The Shining. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Well, that kid not only did Pet Cemetery, but then followed that with New with Nightmare. Us. Oh, so, shit. That's right. Yeah, right. so yeah. he was like, all right, so I got Pet Cemetery check. All right, new Freddy Krueger check. Like, that I got, kid's. I got go-to. Wes Craven and um, fucking Stephen King around the pinky bitches. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be weird to be a kid that worked with Kubrick. Who's uh, or, oh, uh, the, for no. the kid for Ms. Torrance, uh, the Torrance yeah. kid? Yeah, yeah. Just thinking that, and then <laughs> it, it's him and also and the kid from Pet Cemetery and and New Nightmare are the two like big horror kids that I can think of that are like on the top of the list for me. Yeah, yeah. Then they had the kid from um. Oh, what? Why can't I think of it? Uh. Oh, what a twist. Uh, uh, six Sense? Six Sense. The kid from The Six Sense. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. there what it was. a twist. I was like, I was like fuck. Yeah. Wait, Sh- Shyamalan. Shyamalan and Ding Dong. Yeah. yeah. Shyamalan. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, they don't have a primary part, but the fucking twins and Shining will. Yeah, if I yeah. if I'm walking somewhere and I see two girls, I'm no nope, Grady yeah. twins. Turn around. Yep. yep. Turn around. Let's. It was at a um, was it Mad Monster Con in North Carolina in Charlotte. There were uh, these two women that were dressed as the Grady twins, and uh, oh. we ended up partying with them, and they like. We'd be hanging out, like, drinking beer, and the people would come up, like, can we take a picture? And they're like, cool. And they would just run into a hallway and lay down and pre- pretend to be dead in the hallway. Oh, to, to nice. Like, <laughs> not even prompted. They weren't like, can you lay down and pretend you're dead? Because that's kind of a creepy situation. Right, right. So they already knew what people wanted. <laughs> so they would just go and, like, hold hands at the end of the hallway or just, like, lay pretending they're dead. That's just, cool shit. Just unprompted. And I was just like, you guys are fucking rad. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's fucking cool. That's awesome. Well, and, again, speaking of children real quick, I should bring up that the Part of the reason why kids, like, more so, like, it and stuff is because another, I, I call them semi-tropes when it's just sort of a normal thing when a kid is, um, when they try to tell the cops, try to tell their parents and do stuff. And the parents are like, Never you believe. just have a wild imagination and you, you silly boy and go about your business, well, you know? That leads into one thing I want to hit on before we take our break because we're about at that point. But right. The cops in these movies <laughs> are now. I've I've known some very intelligent police officers. I'm I, I, none of them are in these movies ever. <laughs> ever it's true. Like, and that was kind of the fun parody of Scream is that fucking David Arquette oh, played Dewey. Mr. Doofus Dewey, and it was <laughs> such <laughs> such a play into these like dumb ass cops that don't know what the fuck they're doing in these movies. But if we had competent cops, the movie would only be like 25 minutes. I mean, like, killer shows yeah. up, cops take him down, they go, all right, well, that's it. You have to have the cops that, oh, I don't fucking believe it. Yeah. And I, then I want to see that short film where it sets up like it's going to be this epic fucking slasher movie, and it's like, killer, and then this co- very competent cop shows up, just like, Pfft. Yeah, I, right, I had yeah, a shotgun in the car. Or, it was well, easy. What you have, like, in the remake of Friday the 13th and stuff is the cop that, like, he's just like, you kids are just drunk, and all of a sudden shit starts going down, and he's... Oh, and he's like, oh, and he's a badass for about five seconds, and then, and then like, I've got an axe in the throat. Oops. Yeah. yeah and it's just like, uh, you didn't think about that? You do get into the uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street, though, where the cops are, like, kind of playing dumb, but they kind of know what's going on. But they're doing the adult mm-hmm. thing of, like, they don't, they don't want to believe that it's happening so hard that they just ignore all the things. Like, you're going to have to deal with it, dude. Like yeah. you, you're going to have to. Uh, that cell's not going to keep you yeah. alive. Yeah, 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 You're going to get... Well, to be fair, that was more of the later ones. It was just the father that kind of thought something was going on, but he didn't believe Nancy at first. It wasn't until, like, what was it, uh, Freddy versus Jason and ones like that, where the cops were like, yeah, something fucked up happened in this town. We're never fucking talking about it ever. <laughs> never. Don't bring that up, kid. Right, exactly. Don't even, don't even say the fucking name. But that was also playing into Friday the 13th, because Friday the 13th, I, the cops, were, were they just like fingering each other's urethras? Like, what was happening in, that, in fucking Crystal Lake with those cops? They were the biggest <laughs> fucking idiots. And also, like, if there's one section of, a, of like, wooded area where all the murders happen except for eight, because... You know, sometimes you got to take a vacation to New York, but like everything else <laughs> yeah. is in the Crystal Lake area or a space, um, then just don't just cordon that off. Like, just don't just and maybe don't nobody, nobody go there. Nobody no goes near it yeah. around Friday the 13th. Like, that's just like yeah. super or, off limits around that. Well, the first. Yeah, I don't know. The first couple of movies where people were like, yeah, these murders happen for a while. But once you get into like it happening over and over and over again. You're just, you deserve to die if you're moving to a place where people right. have been murdered every, like, two years. Well, let's like, see, the, the first group that tried to reopen the camp got murdered, and then there was another group about a mile down the road that came to the camp, but then they ran away, but they got killed as well. Is the price of the real estate just so great at Crystal Lake? They're like, <laughs> fuck, I mean, I, I hate to bring all these kids here and get we, murdered, we, but... we will pay you to take this property off our hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, no, it's... but it's like a really pretty lake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't they have to tell you that on Zillow? <laughs> And it, by law, they have to tell you about all the murders. So here's a ream of paper with a name and just everything. <laughs> that <laughs> that's why I love. Like it's it's terrible. Jason goes to hell. Oh, um, but what I love is the opening where it's like you know the straight up setup from all the other movies where it's like we're going camping where we're not supposed to be camping. <laughs> and then Jason's like, "Ooh, I get to kill people, fucking you know," and just like goes about his business. 
um, but then it turns out to be a sting. And there's like oh, yeah. full on fucking military there oh, to like yeah. gun him the fuck down. I think a couple of grenades are thrown at him, which is what actually blows him up. I think no, or there's something. like like a fucking grenade launcher or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, or something like that. And it's it's just so utterly ridiculous. And I'm like, it took you nine movies to figure out you had to do that. Nine huh. movies and thirty years later. Yeah. <laughs> what? Although that that what? was getting to the point where like Jason was already like a weird like mollusk mollusk thing that like <laughs> like wiggled into people's mouths and yeah, like took over. That, well, no, that that, that was just because weird. he got blown up. It was. I, I know I'm trying to justify something that should not be justified, but you just watch that movie, wait for him to become Jason again. You're like, yeah. I don't need to see this nurse killing people like Jason. I want Jason to be killing people. Like right. Jason. All it right. took was him to like I don't know like make out with the corpse of his like cousin or something to like morph into jason in the jumpsuit and everything right <laughs> yeah it was like full garb as well like wasn't he was it? fully yeah. like back into jason he had the mask he had the outfit it's not like he turned into jason and then scuffled around and found those and then put them like it wasn't like naked mongoloid jason and then found the clothes like they materialized you with just him. named a porno by the way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the only point i remember of that that i really liked was and um at the very end of that movie with the little reference they throw it. Oh, yeah, they fully, yeah. like, Freddy Krueger hand out of the earth, and it takes uh, the Jason mask yep. and pulls yeah, it into that the... is true. Yeah. The other one I was going to bring up with the uh, talking about cops is the cops are in on it. Uh, God, what a... What a what, there's, there's several movies out there, and I cannot think of them right now, but, like, you know, where the... The, the cops are part of the killer family or, you know, well, I was like, saying, Texas like, Chainsaw, well, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw yeah, yeah, yeah. is definitely like they know what's going on. It's not even like yeah. they're playing dumb. They're just or they're well, part they, of the they may ordeal. not even necessarily be in on it, but they know what's happening. And they're just like, nope, it's better to leave it alone. We're not just not going to mess with it. It's yeah. if we if we don't see it, we don't know. So well, I love those reveals in and that's kind of tropey as well of like the characters that you think are completely clueless as to what's going on in the end. The, and they're right. like, yo, no, that totally happens. Like at the end of uh, the Lost Boys, yeah, when the grandfather is like, that's the thing about like Santa like, Carla, Santa Carla, all, all those the goddamn damn vampires. vampires. It's just like, oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you, you son of a bitch. Yeah. You knew. Son of a bitch. All right, on that note, we got to take our break. Uh, talk about some trivia stuff happening in town. When we come back, we will go over. What we're drinking, our sponsors, and uh, get into making a drunken scene. So stick around. Booyah. Mike the Hobbit, direct from Fallout on a trivia night, telling you to come here every first and third Monday for trivia between 8 and 10, 25 cent wings, drink specials, prizes, and tons of really inappropriate trivia. It's a lot of fun. Do you guys agree? Definitely come out and enjoy trivia every first and third Monday at Fallout. In addition to Fallout, Geeks Under the Influence takes over Wonderland on the corner of 18th and Main Street for Geeks Under the Influence trivia, ridiculous trivia, goofy music, great food, cheap drinks, 1727 East Main. Come and check us out 8 to 10 every second and fourth Tuesday. We're back for the second half of Geeks Under the Influence, episode 126, all things horror tropes. And we've had a great first half. I think we covered <laughs> yes. a lot of bases. We still have a few to cover, and hopefully we won't go so far off the rails that we aren't going to be able to talk Too about late. a few things. <laughs> uh, but before we get into the rest of the second half, uh, we got to talk about our sponsors, obviously. Amazon.com is our longest-running sponsor on this podcast, and for good reason. We all shop Amazon. They've got all the cool shit. Like, I just had a plumbing problem where I had to get a, a little thing for my faucet so it wouldn't... So it would act, the shower would work properly, and I was able to get that on Amazon. But I also made sure to go through the link at guipodcast.com in the top right ah. corner so that buying a little $6 thing for my, for my bathroom, I was able to give a little bit of money back to the podcast at the same time. And you can do that, too. All you have to do, go to guipodcast.com, click on the link, top right corner, and bookmark it. Anything you get through that link, we get a little bit of a cut from it. So you're spending the same amount of money on Amazon, and we get help at the same time don't have to buy movies that we suggest although please do that too by all means uh, you can buy plumbing stuff you can buy shoes whatever doesn't matter uh just go through the i list. don't think we want to know the list most of the time no <laughs> no and luckily i don't really get to see what's being bought so it's your secret is safe with you <laughs> like, yes you know, you buy weird like pee on each other like latex outfit <laughs> stuff or whatever yeah like you go i saw you look at will for that you go. <laughs> Why does everybody just? Assume? 
with a sorry with a name like Macabre, you know it gets peed on. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> really <laughs> not my thing. <laughs> It's not my thing, not your thing, but it's somebody else's thing, and that's okay. We don't judge here. We Mm-mm. well, no, we judge a lot, but, <laughs> but there's no seriousness behind it. We don't no. judge your Amazon purchases. Yes, no, we will not. We no, will not. Uh, so not. yeah, definitely check out Amazon through our link at GUIPodcast.com. Now on to our next sponsor. Very excited, LootCrate.com. Little personal present to yourself every month, yes. or if you want to get it for somebody else that um, is excited about something that they're doing that month uh, for this. Past month for October, it was mystical, was the theme. And uh, we actually have the box here, so for those watching, we're going to do do a quick unboxing. It's going to so. spoil what I've been ordered. Oh, well, it's not going to... Uh, spoiling it would be like getting the box from your front porch just before you grab it and then setting it on fire. Like, that would be... <laughs> yeah. oh, just, like, oh, looking at... Sad. And just not saying anything and just staring at you deeply as the flames start rising and the plastic <laughs> smell starts going. Yeah, that, that would be spoiling it. So, this is the uh, October Loot Crate Box Mystical. Yeah. First thing up is the Ghostbusters t-shirt. Which... So fantastically retro. Yes. Oh, yeah, it is. Colors and all. Look at that thing. God damn it, I can't wait. It's it's so pretty. <laughs> Why is yours here already? Because <laughs> I'm special. But yeah, great Ghostbusters t-shirt. Good quality, too. Like it, it, It's a good quality t-shirt. It's not that fall apart $5 bullshit. Next one up is a Thor versus Loki um, mystery fig- figure. Which I'm going to find out what I got here. Oh, there's a little stand. And I got a Loki. Oh, I got a Loki and a Thor. It's Thor okay. versus Loki. Oh, yeah, it's pretty excellent. awesome. excellent. That yeah. is awesome as shit. Did you not read the title on the box? No, I did. I just opened it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do research on this shit, man. Well, um, never mind. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's not a mystery box, but yeah, these are cool as shit. Yeah, oh, they're yeah, pretty that's awesome. awesome. So they fight each other. That's cool. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, next. Have you seen the Avengers movies? Come on, man. Oh, fuck yes. A limited edition Stranger Things artist series uh, figure. Ooh. Of uh, Eleven and the Demogorgon. Well, that fits in perfectly because tomorrow... Oh, fuck yes. Yeah, we made a... Thoughtful choice to do this episode before Stranger Things Season 2 breaks, because uh, getting anybody out here to do a recording uh, (laughs) when Stranger Things is on Netflix would have been near impossible. I was going to say, by the time this drops, I think most of us in this room are probably going to marathon the shit out of this. Yeah, as as much as possible, yes. It'll be like two weeks before any of us actually listen to this podcast. (laughs) No shit. (laughs) We're kidding. We're all going to be done by Sunday. Uh, You don't have... No, I won't be, unfortunately, but... Close. This is Halloween week. A fucking party. Yeah, but my wife works all weekend, and I've got two children to mind after as well. Okay, that is immensely cool. I'm going to try to show this to the camera behind me here. That is so fucking cool. That's awesome. That's fucking badass. That is cool as shit. Okay, you go right there. Okay. As you, just, oh, oh, yeah. as you take and the soundboard out. The Hobbit fingers <laughs> broke it. Oh, and for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there's a Mr. Pointy bookmark. Oh, nice. There we go. That's awesome. Still doing the Buffy stuff. That's awesome. I, I love that. Hey, you can't argue with that. And then a little vampire button uh, to go with. I, I've got a collection of Loot Crate buttons over in the corner there. So that's what's happening on Loot Crate this month. And uh, yeah, every month they have a different theme. Uh, check it out at Loot Crate. But make sure to go to our links page at GYPodcast.com and go through our link to sign up for Loot Crate. That way we get credit for it so you're putting money in our pockets so we can afford our alcoholism and, you know, <laughs> oh, and, and, and equipment Cheers. and stuff. And, like, storage and record our alcoholism. Yes, yes, and record our alcoholism. <laughs> And it's still, so great no, to have no a hobby th- that you can drink, or you're re- almost required to is drink. There, is there still a discount code for Loot Crate right now? Yeah, if you uh, go through the link at GUIPodcast.com, um, out on the links page, go through there, sign up. When signing up, you save three. When checking out, to save three bucks off your first crate. Uh, so, way for you to save money. And we're still getting the same amount of uh, fundage from them, even if you yeah, use the Again, just code. like Amazon doesn't affect your order, your how much you pay, nothing like that. Nope, nothing like that. So, no, it's just uh, you're telling Except them that you that can you, get a discount. Yeah. Well, well, with the code, but... 
But yeah, if you go Any... to just the Loot Crate site and use the code, it will work, but we won't get credit. So make sure to go through GUIPodcast.com. There you go. So we can get the credit. And now on to what we are drinking. Hey, we're fucking drinking. We're getting drunk. You want to know? Well, here you go. Hey. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Kyle. <Fucking> smash. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We I, miss you, bro. I love his offhand little song he did has turned into this like ridiculousness. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coon awesome. and I are working on something for you, too. Oh, okay. You, you, you did call us out on the last podcast I, I did. was on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we... Oh, I, so I guess I have to commission you as well for uh, the Geek Fathers. We'll talk. <laughs> All right. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice to know musicians or people that are better at you know anything than I am. Um, so yeah, don't good. call me a musician. Okay. <laughs> that's right. I, just, I play a bass. Yeah, person with bass. As, as a bassist, I fully understand what you mean. That's not a yes. real musician. I, I can beat on that thing real well. Yeah. There's th- there's three bassists: Lemmy, Flea, and Les Claypool, and that's it. Uh, yeah, Cliff Burton. Cl- I mean. Okay, oh, well, Cliff yeah. Burton, yeah. Matt Freeman. Okay, there's there's like there's like maybe a dozen bassists. That are actual musicians, and the rest are, you know, just bassists. True. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> on to what we were drinking. Um, Will, you brought something uh, fancy schmancy for us to drink yeah, on. I did. Uh, I have... Now, my hesitation initially was that it is from the Sierra Nevada Company, which I have had some poor experiences with in, the li- in, in my life, but Trip in the Woods, a barrel-aged series. Uh, it's a... Coco Coconut Narwhal, which apparently Narwhal is their their like line of imperial stouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, and I happen to know the lady that was uh, that stocks all the alcohol for you know the specialty alcohols for Kroger in the local area, and she you know came up to me while I was I was like, how is this? She goes, it's fucking great. You have to try it. You have to try it. So uh, here it goes because I haven't even taken a sip of it yet. I just tasted it's- it and. Uh, there's some viscosity here. Like it's not, yeah. it's not a light beer. No, th- this is what we consider a dick kicker. This is oh, this is this is thick. I like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is still to boots dick kicker. I mean, yeah, it's oh yeah, because uh, and it, you definitely got the the bourbon barrel in there for sure. No, this isn't a dick kicker. This is a dicks kicker, like plural. <laughs> yeah, like, there are multiple dicks. Oh, Stand oh, in line. <laughs> yeah, eleven point nine. Oh. Yeah, so this is it's, if uh, there's an opposite of sessionable, this would be <laughs> right a good, a good example. What are you What are you getting at? This tastes totally sessionable. Oh yeah, I, I would love to drink this on a nice hot day on the porch. You know, this really what? imperial eleven <laughs> percenter. Yeah, <sighs> is there something wrong with me that 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 sounds great to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty wrong with you, but uh, <laughs> so it's eleven point nine. So we're in wine territory. Like this is like a bottle of wine that we're sharing right now. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so if you were to take that, take this down, it'd be like drinking a bottle of wine, uh, but a lot heavier. Than oh yeah. A bottle of wine. Yeah. I like night train. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the night train. Oh mm. uh, no! But uh, enough of the Guns and Roses. I love that. It was the shortest Guns and Roses cover <laughs> ever. Right. <laughs> night train. Come on. <laughs> no one needs anything else out of that. I do like it though. It definitely has a. I can taste the little like chocolate notes and a little bit of coconut to it. Yeah, the mm-hmm. chocolate is definitely more prevalent. The coconut, I can taste it, but it's very much a nuanced note. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not really pushing the uh... the way I like coconut. It's a barely a hint. It's enough to. It's a good mix of the flavor. It's not like eating a mounds over here, right? Exactly. Exactly. Mm, that's ooh. That is good. That's a good beer to go with dessert. Like yes. If you eat at I, a decent time of the evening where you've got like a nice dessert and you still got some time that you want to feel kind of fun and fancy free afterwards, then this a, is a, a very homemade chocolate pie at Thanksgiving. Ooh, like a chocolate mousse cake or yes. something. Yes. Or, or a chocolate lava cake. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I, nice. could, I, I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I could get pretty goddamn fucked up on this. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah well, yeah. I mean, whether you like it or not, you could get fucked <laughs> yeah, up on yeah. this regardless. So. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh, it's that good. Is, it's good. That is very good. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm glad I, I a little little outside of my normal like, hey, I'm gonna just buy a bottle of beer range because 
<laughs> I'd say but, uh, we do. We're doing like a a scale now of ABV scale, which is awesomeness by volume, one to ten. And uh, this for me, this is probably like a seven point seven five or eight is probably where I'd put this on the on the scale. There, it's fair a, enough. Very solid. Yeah. I'd be happy to drink this again. Like very happy to very happy to drink this, this again. This this might be the first thing I've ever drank from Sierra Nevada that I like. Actually, I got I got to say the same thing because Sierra Nevada I'd typically go with like you you would think the hippie and the hoppy IPA type and this. Uh, <laughs> you can just tell by your face right now. Yeah, like, Sierra Nevada I, just typically. I, farted in your face. I mean, I yeah, had it's... I had my reservations about <laughs> purchasing it because of that. But then it also said trip in the woods, and I was like, you know what? It, it that's fits. A, that's a trope. So you're, you're taking the trip into the woods. It's a oh, horror yeah. trope oh, joke. Yeah. I, I had to. I, I had to go ahead and cave. Well, and get I'm it. really <laughs> glad that you caved um, in and got this. So am I. This is fuck delightful. Yeah. It is good. How the fuck am I getting home? Now, because I'm going <laughs> to drink this whole goddamn thing. <laughs> it's a sleep overnight. <laughs> All right. Well, now, unfortunately, <laughs> I have to follow that, and I. I Mm, I mean, this might be delicious, but uh, I don't know if it's gonna parallel uh, the delicious. It's good. I already drank my taste of that, so that's really mind. not bad. It's definitely different. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going from one way to the other. So. Yeah, it's definitely on opposite ends of the spectrum. Almost. What I brought for the evening is the Legend Brewing Company uh, limited release for the holiday season, the Halloween holiday season, uh-huh. the Witch of Oak Hill Road High Gravity Ale. And uh, I was looking for ABV on this, and I'm not seeing one, which is uh, usually not a great sign. Um, well, you also drank so much of his that you might be feeling yeah, like right. Again, so you can't <laughs> go go get your words. reading glasses, old <laughs> yeah. man. I'm holding two bottles this right is, now. Right? There's <laughs> words on yeah. it, but I can't. This tell. is nice. It's smooth. It's yeah. It's it's a great drink. I like it. We'll just make up uh, ABV. Uh, I'm thinking this is probably around six, six point five. I'm, I would get other from just like the. I was gonna give it a, a seven on the ABV. You think seven percent? Yeah. And I'm guessing it's around there. I'm not seeing the ABV offhand. Uh, we can look that up in a little bit. But Hunter, do you um, want to take a look just to double check him? Yeah, please double check my <laughs> my, uh, my vision there. Don't hand it to me. I've already told you guys I'm going blind. <laughs> There's almost fruit notes to this. I'm trying yeah. to pick out what fruit that I'm tasting in that, but. <laughs> it's um, a small fucking print on here. I can't is read it this shit. Yeah. orange? Well, or we'll... I think there's some. Yeah, orange, th- there's definitely like a citrus or something. Yeah. in there, definitely. It tastes almost like yeah, the okay, I cheap you. like orange candies that you get for Halloween. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm tasting. I, I would like bit. old like lady that, candies. Yeah, like the old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It tastes exactly. like old lady candy. Yeah, with See, the colored the, foil. The, or... the witch one I would do earlier in the fall, candy. maybe like the beginning of October. Mm-hmm. Then this trip in the woods is more like now, yeah. like right before Halloween. Now that I said like that, bonfire type. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. The little the little sugar coated orange wedge candies, the like gummies that you yeah. get. Yeah. It thinking that when I'm drinking it and that's all I can taste now is yeah mm, fair enough grandma's candy alcohol hey no fuck that I love those things <laughs> oh no no I'm not saying there's any hate on that they're yeah. they're, they're, they're just giving to me be. all day no no <laughs> dude, yep. dude do you, have you seen my physique <laughs> I mean come on he enjoys like the candy, candy. <laughs> kind of nectarini almost nectarini <laughs> nectarini it's <laughs> It's, it's a it's a word. Look it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, nectarini of the well, gods. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I think that's just alcohol. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are the uh, two shares that we're doing this evening, uh, and both very thematic. I I think we did a good job this evening yes. of uh, getting yes. some good theme beers. Uh, to the Cheers. left, Hunter. What are you drinking on besides the share here? Bold Rock IPA. Because it's solid. why the fuck not? Yeah, during I mean. the fall, like that's when I want to start drinking ciders. Like when it's like not super cold out yet. But you still got a little bit of chill in the air. Yeah. Cider is a perfect, like, fucking fire if, pit. If, if it wasn't a full family event, like, we were definitely, like, like I mentioned last week, we were up at Carter Mountain for a day doing the apple mm-hmm. picking. Definitely would have had some, but, I, you know, two children in the car, you can you got to be careful. Doesn't Bold Rock have, like, a little little stand out there as well? Do, no, they have a full out, like, they, you can get most of the flavors out there. Like, people were drinking on all sorts of shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and with Bold Rock, I mean, they do a bunch of different flavors and i haven't had one yet yeah. where i was like this tastes like shit. i'm not a big fan of the blood orange but it's not bad you know i i hesitated from the blood orange for a while tried it was actually pretty pleased with it i was expecting it yeah to, it's not a bad drink just yeah. not my taste yeah, yeah I, would, I, I like so. what it's doing and i would totally drink a uh, blood orange uh of the cider but it's just right. sweeter than i normally tend to go there you go there you go all right uh will what are you drinking on besides the uh 
<laughs> that high octane shit. <laughs> I'm about to throw this in the trap. No, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, after, I actually, after you tasted the chronic of booze over there, you're like, damn right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna buy some more of these. Um, <laughs> go broke this season. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, like, I get like a phone call from your wife in like a month, and it was like, yeah, after you tried that beer on your podcast, like he's just like he doesn't even go to work anymore. He just like, <laughs> the uh, credit well, card is cashed out. Yeah, right. Out, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but what I am drinking on tonight, uh, I've been sipping on for the uh, for the thing is uh, the Ballast Point Brewing Company Dead Ringer in their Oktoberfest, and I mean, I mean I like Oktoberfests anyway. I hadn't tried this one, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And I just I love this like I don't know why he's Skeleton. got I don't know why he's got dreadlocks though. Like I think Ballast Point is like, hippies as well as like Sierra Nevada. Because so. he's because he's definitely in the uh, the traditional Oktoberfest get up skeleton, <laughs> but for some reason he's got like some Rasta dreads going on. He's so. a everybody's got to do something different. He's a, he's a Rasta leader hosen. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> whatever, man, Dude, float your boat, you know. <laughs> like sometimes you got to give. Uh, ups to the Rasta ghosts. Like, I mean, sometimes that's gonna happen. They're gonna get Yum. you high. <laughs> so <Yum>. high. <laughs> is that the like? You know, I, is that like? I'm, a, I'm imagining trying to be haunted by a Rasta ghost and finding it just to not be terrifying. And just come on to get like, your man. Hey man, let me come and scare you, man. I'd be is, like, is it a Rasta skeleton? skeleton? Yeah, it's a yeah. Rasta skeleton. Okay, so wearing wearing, wearing leader hose. Okay, do you so, have any roaches in the house? So it's more like a, a, a lesser known Clash of the Titans sequel, like <laughs> Clash of the Rastas, <laughs> where it's not like it's not Greek gods. It's just like Bob Marley that they're. Fighting. Yo, man, I'm a here to be scary. Boo. Shut the fuck up and just smoke this bowl with me. Pass Pat. that spliff, motherfucker. <laughs> puff, puff, pass. Instead man, of this is some good shit. Oh, Marley came back to visit me. Instead of shamble, it's Shabba. 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 But yeah, I mean, it's all right. <laughs> It's an Oktoberfest. It's pretty good. It's a Ballast Point is pretty good regardless. Well, I, I love their, uh, their 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 sculpins and stuff they do yeah. during the summer are delightful. So, but uh, you're liking the Dead Ringer? It's all right. It's, good. Good. it's an Oktoberfest. Okay, I can't I can't complain. Cool. I don't know, that voice went a little high on that part. Which, yeah. mm-hmm. I, can't I mean, I know that uh, it's not. I can't complain. Well, that's from the Dick Kicker of the Sierra Nevada. That's true. That's true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, hey. That kick in the balls. Yeah, like, that just raised no. his octaves a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, sorry. There we go. There we go. <laughs> this is a beer. Let me uh let me clear the pipes. <laughs> All right, Monster Scott, what do you yeah, got for us? I actually had I, I knew I will say I have bold rock as well, but I went with the, the Virginia draft to just the, the old classic. That's solid too. I yeah, like the- I- I like the Virginia draft. Can't argue. Again, like I said, you know, definitely this time of year, you know, we finally got to take the boys apple picking. It fits. And it goes, and the weather finally cooled down this week. Thank God. Oh, so God, it's it. it's been so nice. And ciders I love in the summer, but definitely the so fall nice. time. So nice. Ah. High five. <laughs> okay. But ciders are like. I'll stop drinking ciders probably after Halloween, and then that's where, of course, we'll get into the Hardywood, the gingerbread stouts, and, you know, I'll get into the, And actually, that trip in the woods is. That's another holiday drink right there, as far as I'm oh, concerned. Fuck yes. So, but yeah, the Bold Rock can't East Coast local bitches. Hell yeah! All right, so that is what we are drinking, and now on to the biggest train wreck. What are you this. drinking? Oh, I'm just Peeber. He's got the American spirit. There you yes, go. The people's the pe- beer of Richmond. People's beer of Richmond is what I'm drinking. There you go. Um, I'm saving money for Halloween fucking madness. Um, so <laughs> next one up is uh the most train wrecky mm-hmm. of the train wreck part of this podcast uh we're talking about making a drunken scene making a drunken scene (laughs) oh yes 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 (laughs) miss money penny so for Mm. this making a drunken scene i was trying to figure out exactly how to do a trope episode (laughs) drunken scene and it it made the most sense to do movies where they kind of talk about tropes or they kind of turn tropes on their head make it, we'll make it plain and obvious <laughs> yeah they're, you they're, know they're, it's, it's the entire concept of the movie is all about the tropes right so of course the first one we've got to do the 1996 scream um scene a, a well-known scene 
I was just gonna give a little mad props to another Wes Craven. Yeah, to Wes for, Craven. Th- this was his oh, big yeah. comeback after in the '90s and everything else. Yep. So, God, I love Wes Carpenter. <laughs> you almost made Scotty spit his fucking drink. <laughs> That was good. That was very good. Somebody, good. God somebody posted it. on Facebook and had a, it was a photo. That was of, Scotty. Of, that was me. My, God damn it. <laughs> it was I, actually, I, I'd forgotten that it was a joke in Scream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, well, I posted the thing where it's a picture of Romero, and it's one of those where it says, like, if you can name a movie other than something by Nightmare John Carpenter, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Street by John Carpenter, you don't know who this man <laughs> is or something. And and I, I think a couple of people were serious about where they're, like, posting shit. Yeah, like, and what the fuck? Yeah, well, well he, the, the perfect one was from Hobbit with Dwight Schrute of the, <laughs> nah! But no, no, people were naming movies, and at first I'm like, are they, do they think I'm serious? <laughs> do they really think that this is John It's Carpenter? like the one with Picard, and it's like, Gandalf, yeah. use your wizard power, Harry. Yeah, or like, where it's Gandalf, and he's talking to an orc, talking about, like, um, what is it? Use talking, the force. Use yeah, the force yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the force, Harry. I think <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you I've go. seen the same thing about oh. uh, Metallica fans. <laughs> it was like name some other song from Metallica other than this or you know and it's like a picture of Pantera. <laughs> Good right. shit. So let's let's get to this so we can get into more trope talk. Uh first one up is Scream from nineteen ninety six. We've got a scene between Randy, who's I'm Randy. I was about to ask who's Randy. That's me. Mm-hmm. And uh Are you now? and Stu. We need Stu. a Stu. Fuck you, Hunter is Stu. I better see the best. Matthew Lillard, <laughs> ever. My fingers aren't long enough, so. Well, you better figure out something. <laughs> All right, I'm going, like, straight up white boy nerd on this one. So here we go. <laughs> uh, so here we go. There are certain rules that m- one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one. You can never have sex. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Big no no. Big no no. Sex equals death, okay? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> <laughs> you can never drink or do drugs. Boo. Boo. The sin factor. It's a sin. It's an extension of number one. And number three, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Ooh. See, see, you push the laws and you end up dead. Okay, I'll see you in the kitchen with a knife. <laughs> that was a great J- Jamie Kennedy, by the way. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. It's like the Jamie Kennedy experiment. Yeah. I, uh, cool. I enjoy that you uh, decided to play the, uh, you know, the dork who you who worked at a movie store. Right. <laughs> yeah. Really out of like yeah, that's, that's yeah. out of my wheelhouse there. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I, I can't. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. For those who don't know, that's where Will and I first met. Is he trained me? <laughs> oh, I he started... was another blockbuster. Yeah, he. Uh... Oh. I was his orig- I was like his first manager. Yeah. <laughs> so was he like yelling oh. at everybody about the horror movie uh, rules? Like everybody that came in. Fuck out if I remember. I was always hung over. <laughs> I was only at that store for like a month before they moved me over there to another spot. But uh, but yeah, no, at the other spots, yeah, I was like, no, what are you doing? Put away that Medea movie. Like, pick up. Here's here's Hellraiser. <laughs> That's going to do you better. Good. That's know. good. You I can. just used to like to fart in the comedy section. There we go. <laughs> I find when, when I, I briefly worked at a video store that if somebody brought up a shit movie, I would just say who was in the movie, not actually give my opinion. You're like, is this good? I was like, well, it's 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 got Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> like and that was my way of getting out of it. I, I'm just gonna tell you who's in it, and you decide. I used to just mention other movies, like, did you like this movie? And they're like, oh yeah, I love that movie. And I was like, oh, then you're totally gonna Ooh, love so this movie. Season so... of the Witch is gonna be good then. Like, yeah. 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 Well, it's it's a spiritual sequel to The Rock. You know, so. <laughs> season, season of the Witch is a great movie as a standalone. No, I'm talking about the Nicolas Cage one. 
So. Oh fuck that. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a shit Nicolas Cage were, one. I thought you were Halloween playing. 3 season. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Just I'm sorry. Season of the I'm Witch. Sorry. Star Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman. No, that no, is I know. Sad I and upsetting. know. I know. Okay. <laughs> so we got to go on to the next one here. This is the the longest of the of the three scenes that we're doing. This is from Cabin in the Woods from 2012. I cannot speak more about how much I, I love this movie. Love I this fucking movie. love this movie. Pretty fucking fucking love it. It's amazing. So we got uh, Kurt. Who is Kurt? <clears throat> I am Kurt, which, I mean, they didn't model this character after me. Yeah, you probably. Know? Yeah. So you know, Scotty. football jock type. Oh, you're totally the football jock type. Hey! Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Monia, where are you? Then we got Marty. Who is Marty? Right here. That is fuck you, Hunter. And right here. <laughs> then I am Hadley. Who's Sitterson? Oh, I'm also a Sitterson. You're, uh, okay, fuck you, Hunter's also. Uh, and who you is be Sitterson? Who's, well, who's Holden? Or, I'm Holden. Okay. Oh, okay. Will is yeah, Holden. I'm Holden. And that is it, right? I'm Holden. Oh, and I'll also be doing narration on this one. So. Okay. So here we go. The zombie redneck torture family are attacking the cabin. <clears throat> lock. We gotta lock this place down. He's right. We'll go room by room, barricade every window and door. We gotta play it safe. No matter what happens, we have to stay together. Watching the kids from the control room, Hadley slaps his forehead. Fuck. Calm down. Watch the master work. Citizen pushes buttons on the control panel. A grill opens in a cabin wall, and a gas pours through it. Kurt enters the room and is affected by the gas at once. This isn't right. What? What the? What's the matter? The, the this isn't right. We should split up. We we could cover more ground that way. Also affected by the gas. Yeah, yeah, good idea. In disbelief that they just said something so stupid. Really. A lot of mercy. <laughs> nice callback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a zombie's axe crashes through a wall. You guys, you guys, get to your rubes. Marty has a protesting expression as his friends run to different rooms. Cut to Hadley placidly eating popcorn. Who's Hadley? <laughs> oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Lock him in. Okay, there we go. All right. Ooh. Oh, wow. I didn't realize Hadley had a second line. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was awesome. And um, if you know that movie, you would understand everything going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next one is uh, one that's so close to my heart. I love this movie as well. With Hope and Washburn of Firefly and Serenity. Oh, um, yeah. Alan Tudyk is in this. Uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil from 2010. We've got a scene between the sheriff. Who's doing sheriff? I am. Uh, Will. Yep. And who's doing Tucker? That'd be me. That is Scotty. <laughs> and yeah, I don't think we really, really need the narration on this one. Nah, nah. All right. So whenever you guys are ready. Where are you two headed? Well, uh, we're we're headed to our uh, you know vacation home up by uh, you know uh, Morris Lake. I think mm -hmm. every penny I had into it, man. You know me, me and Dale here. We're going to fix her up and then do a little fishing. He's been stinking out by the ladies. Striking out. Striking. He, well, he's stink too. But he's been striking out by the ladies. And I figure a little man time, you know, you know man time, is might, might do him some fucking good, man. Hmm. There ain't nothing up there but pain and suffering. On a scale you can't hear, man. <laughs> right? So, you know, the, the, like, Boomhauer and his dad are talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was good, good connection on that, man. Yeah. Good, was, all right. So that's a thing that happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that should be the tagline for just this entire podcast. Yes. Yeah. Like, so well, that's a thing that happened. <laughs> No, just oh. that happened. So that happened. <laughs> that yeah. happened, yes. All right, so back into the uh, subject at hand. Uh, we're talking horror tropes. Uh, one thing We, we had a subject? <laughs> we did. <laughs> uh, one what? thing we talked about outside that we wanted to touch on before we get um, too far into this is uh, 
human experimentation is a major aspect in so yes. many horror movies. And uh, there's Nazi doctors, there's there's like un, unlicensed doctors, all sorts of different people that decide to uh, try their hand at uh, fixing up or breaking down the human body. Yeah. The, the glory of this topic to me is that it all stems from even like what we started the month with. Universal horror, it all comes out of the Frankenstein mythos, the, the unchecked doctor, the horror of what he can create or she could create or it could create. It's just, and it's just spread over time into such a vast genre of, of the, the trope, you know, the, the doctor that creates God knows what. You mentioned that, and the first thing that I came to as far as, like, how far that trope has gone, although I wouldn't say that it's necessarily technically a horror movie. It has the elements, uh, much like Jaws would be. Uh, Jurassic Park is very much following there that same yeah. trope of, like, uh, that line is, like, a man is so so worried about whether they could... Uh, they weren't thinking about whether they should. I was hoping you were going to do a Jeff Goldblum version the, of that. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, 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 no. Then we get into the fly. Uh, no, oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, like, uh, but, uh, oh, Brendel Fry. Fly. <laughs> but you're right. And, and even then, like, as far as action movies go, Jurassic Park had a lot of horror elements oh, to it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, really, absolutely. Oh, that it, first time you're, you're watching it and you see fucking Samuel Jackson's <laughs> arm, just his arm, you're like, God damn, this is a fucking kids movie. Yeah. Well, it goes back to even the connection on the the sci-fi to horror. Like the first Alien movie was considered more of a horror, mm-hmm. not necessarily sci-fi. Well, I mean, it's that's straight sci-fi. Like that's hard genre sci-fi horror. Yeah, the first exactly. Alien movie. Well, yeah. and and we and again, just to go back to our main man Romero of the the doctor scientist person doesn't necessarily have to be working on humans, but we talked about monkey shines. Last episode, oh, which yeah, the, the experimentation was more so on the monkey than it was the human. Well, and don't forget the doctor from Day of the Dead. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All the experimentation on the zombies and stuff. That as well, yeah. absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it goes everywhere. And then, obviously, Reanimator. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey Combs, man. Still yes. the only that I, only one that I can think of of a, a severed head cunnilingus. Uh, the only <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of those in uh, the. It's weird. Like yeah. I, it, at this I point, it should like be people, its own trope. You know? People are yeah. missing the mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the time when men are going down, they're missing the mark. But you know, it's just called not enough practice. Speak but, for but yourself. Just, just... Oh no, I'm not speaking for me. <laughs> <laughs> but just for a head to sit there and shit talk to him yeah. as well, where he's doing the shit, and he's just like, "You're gonna fuck it up." You're gonna <laughs> fuck it up, and I again Jeffrey Combs though pulls it. Yeah, he does. I mean, because actually in a lot of those early movies, um, from Beyond, which was more of a Lovecraft driven story oh, as well, another so doctor good. who went way beyond into like human more more so human psyche than physical, but still like fucked with the human body and just weird shit happened, but. Well, and you look at even even beyond doctor experimentation, you look at something like Videodrome, where it's an experiment yes. experimentation on like reality itself and and uh, just the makeup of our bodies and dimensional interactivity. Yeah. Like, there's all sorts of stuff going on in that movie, and I I'm still unpacking that movie, and I saw it when I was like a teenager, and I'm still like Dude, the new flesh. What fuck? It's Cronenberg, yeah. so yeah. I mean, like, yeah. you can only get so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you just watch it so many times that you're just like, sure, why not? Yeah, that's that happened. Like Cronenberg's you know? more approachable than Lynch. Um, but yeah. but <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen Crash? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, when they rip open the when he when uh, James Spader rips open the stitch wound to fuck it, yeah, that's, yeah, uh, you're like, I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we're not talking about the the Oscar winning movie from like 2004. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. With, with the Oscar winning so- uh, soundtrack song by Three Six Mafia uh, that, that won an Three Six yeah. Mafia has a fucking Oscar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three. I'm gonna repeat. Three Six Mafia has a fucking Oscar. There you go. Didn't so. they also do the soundtrack to Hustle and Flow? 
Uh, that was, was that was actually just Terrence Howard. <laughs> oh well, okay. like he played all the parts in that movie and also did the entire soundtrack. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Um, a very talented man. But no, Crash, uh, the Cronenberg, <laughs> Cronenberg movie Crash from the 90s. Um, oh, jeez. Fuck. Uh, that was one of those movies that I discovered in the uh, old movie section at a video store well before my blockbuster days, where I just picked it up because it looked interesting and went, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good term. It's happiness mm-hmm. interesting. You know, I yeah. actually, while you guys were talking about human experimentation and everything, I just thought of a movie I haven't seen in a long time, Altered States. Oh, oh yes. fuck, yes. Yeah, you know, just the weird shit that comes from experimentation. Uh, so it just popped in there. So I had to mention it. Well, so. even we're talking, we started talking about dismemberment, but like as far as human experimentation, we can go as far as saying flatliners. I mean, falls into that same trope of just like human beings trying to take the human body or our experience. Uh, altered states reminded me of, of, of <laughs> flatliners a little just bit. Just spiral. Yeah, just right into Down it. the rabbit hole. That, Here we go. Yeah, it's just seeing how far the human mind can go, uh, which kind of falls into that. You know, like, what is reality? What is our experience? You know, what level of understanding do we have as human beings? And, um, uh, like, Flatliners covers that really well. I have no interest in ever seeing that remake that came out and bombed immediately and nobody ever heard from it ever again. Yeah. I forgot there was a remake. That's how important Everybody it was. did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I choose to just erase the last 30 seconds of my memory. It, it's sitting there in the back of my what brain. What were we talking the, about? Um, Point Break remake yeah. uh, that came out. <laughs> it's, it's equally it's as a, important. It's like every fifth remake is actually good so they just had it you can't get it and then a good flat i like that you're giving it that much like every fifth i'm, I'm more like every 20th remake is <laughs> that's true is, is okay and every 50th is like solid every fifth is mentionable that's right <laughs> on a no-name podcast nobody gives a shit about like mentionable We're calling like, you out not like variety is reporting <laughs> on it but like you can hear it here first. Yeah. We got the we talked about it. We got the exclusive on the sweet, sweet Flatliners remake conversation. Yeah. Welcome to Geeks Under the Influence, where we t- it's, from this point on all we talk about is the Flatliners remake. <laughs> then why did I come back? Every episode <laughs> from now on is just going to be unpacking the Flatliners remake. Yeah, just just go, just leave, <laughs> just run away. Juno fast. went into the I, afterlife, right? I, quit yeah. <laughs> <I'm> just, I... <laughs> another good thing if uh you are unfamiliar listeners with uh six degrees of kevin bacon flatliners is a fucking keystone movie oh yeah you know, for, ah. for that game because yeah kevin bacon's in it and so many other actors are in that movie there's a ball one in there there's yeah, so there many ways to connect through flatliners it's my saving grace half the time on that game. Fucking Julia Roberts had a left field. Like, that was yeah. not her type of movie at all. No. It's been back it's then. It's before she got to be. God, I need to go back no. and watch that movie. Was that before now. or after Pretty Woman? It was after, but it was so close that it was before she. Before she really, comedies. like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Peaked out. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I- I'm making myself a note to actually go back and rewatch it because it's been so long. Dude, that the original, not the remake. I'm, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Fuck. <laughs> now another movie that I had mentioned outside about human experimentation that's more literally like experimenting on humans that I love to fucking death. Um, and it's ter- It's not good. Like I, I want to preface like <laughs> this is not a good movie, but it's not supposed to be. It's totally camp. It's cheesy as fuck. Uh, Frankenstein's Army. Uh, basically, yeah. Allied forces during World War II run across a uh, a. Uh, laboratory that the Nazis have used to experiment on human beings, basically churning out assembly line style, a grade Z version of like monsters, Nazi whatever. monsters with like weird stilts and shit. Like it's, it's fucking weird and it's so much fun. And it's like found footage from world war two. Uh, Cause that's this. a thing. Yeah. That it's, it's so fun. Fucking it's cheesy. The, it's the part history books didn't want you to know. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, GY fact. GY yeah. fact. <laughs> yeah, based on a true story. Um, <laughs> you bring it up. It's though. found footage. It happened, right? And when you were wondering what Mengele was really up to. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it up, and it actually puts me to thinking that oh, initially, while we were talking outside, we were talking about the human experimentation and everything, and the, the idea of, you know, the Nazi experimentation, but uh, actually, in and of itself, the 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 Nazi as a villain 
has actually become kind of a trope. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. got dead snow. You've got uh, what was it? what was it? Yoga hosers where they have yeah. sausage <laughs> Nazis. You've Bratsies. got uh, well, Bratsies. 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 Well, you've got Iron uh, Scott. We brought up Iron, Iron Scott, even Sky. though it's not a horror movie, but it's still the perfect villain. It's still a genre. Yeah, picture. and I'm gonna. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm gonna go ahead and save everybody the time. Never watch Zombie Lake. No, it's about no. Zo- it, it's 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 a really I don't remember when it came out. It's an old film about Nazi zombies coming out of a lake, and it's it's bad. Oh, if you want to see Nazi <laughs> zombie movie, the hands down favorite of mine is Shockwaves. If you've not seen Shockwaves, it's from no, like seen that one. Uh, maybe like late seventies, early eighties. Oh, okay, um, <laughs> probably early eighties. I'm I'm figuring it's probably like post Dawn of the Dead, and I think it's an Italian picture though. I don't think it's a Fulci flick. And it is wonderful. Like, they come across an island where there's been, like, a former Nazi base camp. Oh, and there's, like, a, a rundown hotel. And there's all these fucking Nazi zombies running around doing some shit. And it's, wow. it's so fun. It's that's, it's that's another one of those, like, Italian horror flicks that was a sequel, unquote, unquote, yeah, 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 to, yeah. Yeah. like, yeah. full C's. The same way that Full C was supposed to have been a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. It just it keeps like spiraling into this <laughs> awfulness of people. That was a huge thing at the advent of, of like the zombie genre. But it came from horror. If you look at a lot of the early 1950s, yeah. 1960s horror movies, there were all these weird unofficial sequels to more popular movies and they just like changed the name. Like that's where it was Alucard started coming out instead of Dracula, you know, like all this. Well, copyrights were funny back then. They were super funny back then. And like all of the sequels that came from the Romero films were all like, Oh, we got together and wrote the script, but then we never decided to put it out. But now, you know, Romero doesn't have anything to do with it anymore, but I'm still going to put it out. Yeah. 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 Like day of the dead Two. Contagion. Uh, don't. Just anyone. Just don't. don't. No. Don't. It will not be in the links uh, attached to this episode. <laughs> Never. Ever. 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 It, but you Never do have used... Return of the Living Dead, which took a actually pull from that. And and speaking of tropes. Right. Uh, one that was oh, created. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm actually mad that we didn't mention this before. Actually, yeah, you're right. It was created from the Living Dead, the Return of the Living Dead series. Which was John Russo, who co-wrote Night of the Living Dead with George Romero. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually wrote the, the novel, novelization of Night of the Living Dead as well. Uh, he went on and they made an agreement that, that George Romero carried on the Of the Dead moniker for his sequels. And um, Russo carried on Living Dead to separate the two. So they, they were able to kind of like basically pay homage to the mm-hmm. original in Return of the Living Dead, they even mention the 1968 Night of the Living Dead yep. as something that happened as a individual like pocket thing um, that carried over into Return of the Living Dead. That it existed. And yes, yeah, Russo created Return of the Living Dead. And what we're talking about is zombies eating brains. And all right, a couple points because you got me on a rant now for this. Sorry. Oh, God. First off, the, 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 really excited. First off, this is gonna be a long time. It is. I'm sorry, <laughs> but well, the connection to the original one is even where um the tar man zombie came from was the barrel, which they said was the chemical that caused the original zombies. Tri- trioxin. Trioxin. Thank yeah. you. Um, for the original zombies coming through. And Return of the Living Dead. Uh, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. But also, point number two yeah. is Return of the Living Dead was the first time that it was actually brains that zombies craved mm-hmm. after. So rich and spicy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there is, I would suggest anybody that loves punk rock and zombie movies to check out the Quincy Punk song. Um, uh, Dude, that soundtrack. Period. The, no, the, well, the, this was an on the soundtrack. It was a song that the Quincy Punks wrote. Um, oh, I, that, I, okay. I can't one. remember the name of the song, but it the, there's a line. It's like it, it's all about that scene in Return of the Living Dead. If you love me, if you really love me, you let me eat your brains. <laughs> but that original soundtrack as well was yes, dude. The bands, killer. the the damned, the cramps, all, cramps. Uh, I think T.S. Well was on uh, there. Fear, fear. Um. um Oh, shit. Fucking 45 Grave. Yes. Uh, with the song, Party Time, uh, from that. Which, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, fucking any time that I have a party themed question for trivia, that's the first song I go to. I, oh, fuck. I'm very familiar. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> you hear Will, the excitement. Who goes to like all the you can hear the excitement in there. Yeah, yeah he's like, yes, weird. no, I know that you use that song way. I, too I still get much. excited though. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar. <laughs> the one thing I will say about Will doing trivia nights is that he's one of the few people that pays attention to the songs that I'm playing along with the questions because I make the songs thematic, and oftentimes it's like punny songs that I use. Like if there's a song about like the the singer from In Excess hanging himself and I play Hanging Around by the Counting Crows, you know, like something like that. You know, like, you know, That's he, good. He, yeah. okay. I feel like most most Monday nights Hobbit over here turns around and looks at me to see if I laugh and caught the joke. Like I'll feel the glare from across the room and I'll be like, oh wait, there's a joke here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Like I make, I still make dad jokes like during the trivia night, but oh, I also like to make musical dad jokes. Oh, at they're the great. Same time. There you go. Because being the background that I have in music as well as film, I definitely, I definitely try and key in on it and be like, why is he making that? Now, occasionally, actually, you, you once in a while have given away the answer. Once or twice. uh, There's been a couple times where you played a song and I'm like, why is this pertinent to this? Oh, son of a bitch. That guy hung himself. (laughs) That's right. Richard hung himself. Richard hung himself. Oh, I remember that now. Nice. (laughs) Well, that... Back to the topic at hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was even going to say where um, Return of the Living Dead 2, just picking up where we left off in there, was almost like... It was done differently, of course, for the time, but it was almost like Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, where it was the story started over, but two of the main characters were like, don't we know each other? And they were two of the main characters that hung out the whole time in the first exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. kind of fucked you. Know, you know, yeah, it, it, they really just had those little zingers, and which, again, I, I don't think John Russo has enough props for a lot of the stuff that he wrote as well, especially after meeting oh, exactly. him. exactly. Didn't those two dudes still make a cameo in the third one, too? I'm pretty sure they did. It's been a while, but um, I would I, not doubt it. I feel like that was, they made it like a running joke. It wasn't until you know, there's the five four, of those now. Well, right? six, six. <laughs> I think so. I've lost count. There were the two sci-fi originals. There was uh, well, Return of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead Two, Return of the Living Dead Three, three. with the chick, and then yeah. there was uh, there was the Necronopolis s- and Rape of the, to the Grave and Rape, Rape to the Grave. I never saw Rape. So, Rave to the Grave, you don't need to see. You it's don't need literally to. called Rave to the Grave. I, I yeah. think that tells you right there, stay the they, fuck away. They make drugs out of the trioxin, and they Stop. give it to ravers, and That's... then the rave turns into a zombie massacre. Nope, never mind, I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, my head's hurting just thinking right. about how awful that maybe, is. Maybe it was just five. I mean, because again, like there are so many movies playing off of these other movies, and the, the, the names are so close, but yeah. they change it just enough. Like Lucia Fulci, the, all the zombie series right, turned right. into like five or six remakes off that one, too. Exactly. Oh, yeah, because I not have remakes, yeah. but the sequels. I bought Zombie 4 before I thought to look and see if it was made by <laughs> Fulci. And. A, no. Um, B, <laughs> well, no shit. <laughs> B, it goes straight into like the voodoo zombie thing on that one. And right. it's like, it's it's so fucking terrible. I'm not sure if I sold it or just threw it away, but I don't think I have it anymore. Like, it just needed oh, to not be in my house yeah, anymore. Either way, up. you're in a better place for yeah, it, for doing it's that. It's still on my shelf. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's I don't super- care. Yeah. I, I, I own I Zombie mean, Lake. Yeah, I mean, do you leave it there just to fool people? Like, he watched this, ha ha, fooled you. I'd say this. You're no, just it's just a numbers in... thing. Okay, all right. All I'd right. say this. You're just dropping in a kid's bag for trick trading. <laughs> Make him pay the price. Now, there you go. As far as zombie <laughs> movies go, one that I feel like kind of avoids a lot of the tropes and is super underappreciated is uh, one that stars Rupert Everett and the American. Na- title for it is Cemetery, Cemetery Man. Man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the original oh, edit is known as Della Morte Della More, and I would thoroughly suggest if you have the opportunity to find the European so cut good. of it, the European cut is far better than the American cut. Uh, although, if you only have opportunity to see Cemetery Man, the um, American cut, still check it out. It's still very worthwhile. There's, I was trying to get a death rock band together for years with that movie as the reference. It was going to be called Nagi and the Zombie Boy Scouts. Oh, um, how good a fucking death rock band name is that? 
that <laughs> that's I know awesome. Really no one would get it because no one's ever seen that no. movie. The the first That's why it's better. Like it's even better. <laughs> the, the first to get it will be like, oh fuck yeah. It'd the first time it. I saw that movie, drunk in a hotel room at Virginia Beach on a random trip, and we're like, oh, let's see what that it was some weird shit, but we, I, I was into it. I, it's a great fucking movie. I mean, yeah. it's it really takes a different perspective on a zombie type movie. Ah, yeah. Forever. So just put that on my rewatch list. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Do it. As if I wasn't far enough behind with everything yeah. else. Add it to the list. Rewatch, right. rewatch Cemetery Man. It has been a long time. Right. I forgot how great of a movie that is. We got maybe one more trope before we got to get going. And there's one that I really wanted to hit on before we get out of here. Um, the other dimension of evil. It's something that's been used multiple times, one of which, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up is because what's dropping the day after we record this, Stranger Things Season 2, the Upside Down yes. being the you dark like, dimension. You mean like 3 in the morning this morning? Or 3 in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Who's staying up? Nope. Who's the true fan? <laughs> oh, fuck that. <laughs> but it's something that definitely oh, shows up in a lot best. of Stephen King movies as being yes. different dimensions. I mean, you look at Dark Tower... And, you know, where, where Pennywise, the clown, comes from, like, all of that. It, it, and a number of his books also. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say The Fucking Mist. I mean. The Mist is huge. Yeah. Yes. Part of that. Yeah. Um, damn it. I actually, I think I had a list of some of these. Well, The Mist, we, we already talked about even From Beyond as well. Beyond, which yeah. Because, again, coming from Lovecraft. I mean, Lovecraft, that's all he basically wrote about oh, yeah. was other dimensions and a parallel world and everything like that. Um. Shit, there well, another one. Motherfucking event horizon. Thank you. God, yes. God damn, damn it. Right. I knew yes. there was yes. I knew you were gonna incorporate that somehow. Oh, you're this. god damn right, because it's event fucking horizon. <laughs> damn I love right. That fucking movie. Dude, again, props to Sam Neill. Sam Neill. I love the shit that he did for horror, man. Another band that I wanted to start was a thrash band with Steve O from uh the first basis for the Creepazoids. We were gonna call it it was it was gonna be a band where we sung about nothing but Sam Neill movies, and we were gonna call it In the Mouth of Radness. <laughs> trash band. that that needs to happen that i'm 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 all about it i have so many good ideas for bands and th thematic bands um but no talent whatsoever which makes it way harder to actually get a band you started. don't you don't actually need talent oh, that's no, true i've seen your band play um, no oh right? <laughs> wow I actually like synthetic well, nightmares. Get a little rough. Why? Yes, why? Yeah. You, why you think that's? Why you think that's hurtful? It's no, not I, hurtful. I, he turns to you like, no, he's correct. Like I'm not I, mad. Like that's a hey. That's yeah, why we. That's why for, I started getting dancing girls and people breathing fire and blowing blood it's, all it's over more the place. So that, it's more so that it's more so that Hobbit was able to pull out a zinger like that. It's more than anything. Oh, that's that's okay. where we got worried. So, yeah, especially this late in the game. But right. I love that idea there's this thin veil, like what Halloween's all about, that it's the night that the veil between like the land of the dead and, and our world is like the thinnest. Yeah. These movies kind of like translate that in, in their own way to kind of say that, that there's this other, Oh, that's creepy. This other place where, where the dark things live and come out. Hellraiser is another good example. You know, yeah. that other. Thank you. The I fact was you, you fact that you bring up the veil, that uh, I believe it's three thirty in the morning is supposed to be every night three three a.m. to three thirty yeah and that the fact that Stranger Things is going to drop at three a.m. our time that's cool hey. it just it just clicked I was like there you go fuck they're dropping that, it the that's veil. the witching mm -hmm. hour right yeah yeah the actual, okay. the, yeah yeah, yeah. I was even going to bring up out. um because one of the newer tropes that we were you know we were kind of talking about the different tropes that are out there is um and there is a connection is what but one of the newer tropes is where you lose signal. You know, where you got you got lose call. But it's it's almost opposite spectrum. If you've ever seen there's the original Japanese version and then there were a few American Are you talking ones? about Cell? Pulse. Oh, Pulse. Okay. Pulse, which the first one was good. The 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 sequels in the American versions were kind of weird, but they did follow the, the same continuity, but where it's the dead communicating through modern like cell phone signal, things like that, and it's it, it really turns into like it turns into a post apocalyptic type thing because there's all these different signals out there and that's what the dead are feeding off of and they're coming from the other side. Yeah. So it, it I that, I thought that was a great fit as well. Okay, we gotta we gotta wrap this up, but there there's so many that we didn't even hit on, but that's that's the thing with this kind of like open end 
style episode. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I like it is that it's just, it's such a fun conversational episode where we don't have to hit all the points. There's no way we're going to cover all the tropes in horror. Mm -mm. You should have an anniversary trope horror. An anniversary. Like, <laughs> there are so many episodes. We, <laughs> we could literally do like a year of episodes and then the next year, just week by week, do a sequel to each episode that we did the first I'm just year. saying true. this one would be an easy one to cover and then you'd be a trope yourself. Yeah, that's true. And just <laughs> and even rehash because they do that on, on sequels all the time. But oh, so does that, does that mean we're going to trope within a trope? We're going to trope within a trope within a trope, which makes it meta. Ow, so, my brain's like, hurting. There's so much stuff happening right now. Meta trope. But I'm going to read out a couple trope of things. Trope Inception. Um, <laughs> Creed of Deaths. Uh, apparently, murderers only kill at night. Um, evil neighbors. The neighbor next door, like Fright the, Night. The creepy. Like that. Oh, yeah. Or, or Disturbia. Oh, yeah. The Burbs. The Burbs. The burbs. The burbs. <laughs> I thought about that one too. Rear yes. window, or <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, there's a ton of those uh, on the on this anniversary where there's so many things where it only on this night, you know, it's 20 years when uh, from when he died, kind of shit. You know, there's prom um, night two, Mary Lou, dragon by the feet, like oh, being dragged away. Yeah, yeah. Being, like the 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 slow walking killer, but also slow walking. What is that about? That's what's awesome yeah. is that somebody's running their ass off and they're going to trip on something. We've yeah, been, which is also but, its own trope. But truth between Jason, Michael Myers, they just take their fucking time. To like, I'm going to kill you at some point, motherfucker. You're going to trip right. or you're going to go in the wrong fucking corner. I'm going to get you. And they just take their time and casually wait and then kill the fuck out of them. The, the car won't start. The car, the, we mentioned that briefly, but the car won't the, start thing. The, like, I mean, fuck, get a better car. Like, I don't have a great car. I was just talking about my transmissions going, and I got to buy a new car, like, in the next week or two. I'll drive in first gear the whole way if I have to. But that's the thing, like... <laughs> but, I mean, shit. Why do you one, people not have jump packs? And the thing that pisses... <laughs> the one that upsets me the most is my, like, my favorite horror movie of all time is Night of the Living Dead, where she doesn't have the keys, right? Because uh, her, her brother that gets, like, his head fucking caved Dumbass. in on a tombstone has the keys so she's in the car and zombies like throwing a fucking rock at the window um which by the way reminder for those that are like oh yeah zombies can't use guns they use fucking rocks in the first one oh man Fuck here you. we go again anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um so she puts it in in neutral and rolls the car right and it's a straight road and somehow Veers the car, the car off the road and crashes into a car into a fucking tree. The car Ma crash. Ma the car crashes. A trope. The car crashes. A trope. Prior to power steering, I'll give you that. It was a straight race. Right. She didn't have to turn it. What if the alignment it's was before, off? Yeah, it's before power steering. Then she then just, just a little. Yeah. Now to she be fair though, out. wasn't I'll say Barbara was wasn't she? She was the first to kick off her shoes though when running away. Yes, I believe she was the first one. I could be if. Anyone listening knows Clever better, girl. please let us know. But I believe that that is the first time that you saw a girl trip and kick her shoes off before continuing to run barefoot. Because some of these, like the modern day, like where they're in high heels and making a full out sprint down the block. Yeah. Fuck that. That is not legit. I'm sorry. Uh, the horror character avatars. We talked about it a little bit, but you know, there's the jock, there's the cheerleader, there's the geek, there's the stoner, there's the black guy. Um, which speaking of which. I was getting towards the end here. We've got to raise a glass here that yeah. Stephen went to go use the bathroom and he said he would be right back. And then he just and never returned. And that was, that was before we started recording. So as true with any trophy horror movie is the same with geeks under the influence. The black yeah. guy died first. So, uh, to low down Brown, low down RIP, um, 1980, whatever to, you know, 2017. <laughs> uh, He'll be, he'll be right yes. back in our hearts. Yes. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We. we, oh, we gotta... shit. I feel like he's cussing you guys so bad. Right? Yeah. Oh, he's he's. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. I'll go. Right I'm always back. gonna have him investigate the sound I hear in the woods. Yeah. All right. Like. All right. So we're shutting this down. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Geeks Under the Influence. This is. Uh, the la well, no, we're actually doing an Evil Dead episode uh, here in a couple weeks after the Thor episode. Um, that that's a thank you to Emily C, who does the GUI podcast website. Right, is a thank you for all the hard work that she's done. She had the option of uh, picking out an episode of her choice and to uh, stock it with whoever she'd like on the episodes. And uh, so we're doing Evil Dead. We covered the uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. 
very early in this podcast, but we're going to get deep dark into Evil Dead 1, 2, and Army of Darkness on this Well, one. and of course, it's come up on previous Halloween stuff, but I sure. mean, you can always bring it up. But we're going to get, I mean, the, the people on are very dyed-in-the-wool yeah. Evil Dead fans, so we're going to get really into the, the backstory and all that stuff. Yep. But uh, So this is almost the last horror-centric one for the season. We got Evil Dead, and that's about it, after our Thor episode, which is next week. So uh, check that out. And uh, check out all our social media at GUIpodcast.com and uh, share with your friends. Please share with your friends. Word of mouth is really why we've gotten as far as we have is you just telling people about this and uh, rate us and uh, and comment on iTunes. It moves us up in the rankings so other people have a chance to be exposed to this awesome podcast. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode of Geeks Under the Influence. Thank you for the use of Little Girl on the intro by Gajira Experiment and for the use of Dead by Dawn on the outro, speaking of uh, Evil Dead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, there you Dead go. by Dawn on the outro by the Creepazoids. And as always, I'm Mike the Hoppet Bicket. Join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. <laughs> Join us or die. Join us or die. Join us or die. Or I will swallow your soul. Necronomicon gives us power to rise from the dead. You play the tape. Our play begins to spread. You can fight with all you want because you felt you resist. We're here to take the world and rule with all your fists. So join us or die, join us or die, or I will swallow your soul. GUIPodcast.com. <laughs>